And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rainy Bethany, Oklahoma. Southern Nazarene football is on the air tonight. The Crimson Storm opening the 2022 season as they take on the Weevils of Arkansas Monticello. Welcome to the broadcast booth, everyone. I'm Luke McConnell, joined on the call for the start of our fourth season together. Dear friend and former SNU player Landry Franks. And Landry, the start of a new year, a lot of hope, a lot of optimism, a lot of excitement. And a big opportunity here tonight for us and you to continue to build here in Coach Dustin Hayda's second season. Yeah, absolutely. You can you can feel the uh, the optimis- optimism um, talking with Coach today, but also just the players. Uh, this season brings uh, a lot of new opportunities um, and uh, opportunities to capitalize on things that they did really, really well last year uh, and finish some games instead of close, uh, finishing those on top this season. So looking forward to a good season with you, Luke. Last year, the Crimson Storm went 1-10. and ten. The Weevils checked in at 5-6 and six and were picked 7th in the preseason coaches poll. SNU finished 12th. Um, in the preseason coaches poll voting. Uh, something Arkansas Monticello coach Hud Jackson uh, said at GAC Media Days last month in regards to expectations that, that really stuck out in regards to kind of both of these teams. If that's where you've been finishing, that's where they're going to pick you. And Landry, how does SNU get out of that and change that narrative this year? Yeah, you know, I'm trying not to make it too simple, but they need to win football games. Um, that's been something... Uh, that has been a challenge uh, for the history of, of SNU in Division II football. But it is something that at one time seemed uh, very improbable. Uh, but now it seems very tangible. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you have to win games to, to earn that respect in the conference. But each season, their play on the field has shown that they're just not a, a bye week anymore. Uh, but they are, in fact, a team uh, to be dealt with. Uh, in this really, really talented conference. For those of you watching at home, you can find all SNU home games here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel. Also be at select road games this year, and you can catch those on the Crossover Radio Sports app. Just go to your app store or your Google Play store. Search Crossover Radio Sports, download the app, and tune in whenever we're on the road. And Admittedly, our schedule on the road is going to be a bit in flux throughout the year, uh, but for our first road broadcast, we will be in Durant when SNU takes on Southeastern on September 24th. Uh, we'll not be on the road next week in Arkadelphia against Washita Baptist, but first road broadcast on Crossover Radio Sports September 24th in Durant. And uh, for those of you watching at home this evening, haven't gotten the camera out the window yet due to all the rain. We want to make sure we're protecting the equipment as much as possible. The field currently is a lake becoming more of a lake as we speak um a lot more rain than we expected over the course of the day not in not only in quantity but also in duration uh landry it's going to make for an interesting for sure first half the rain should be tapering off here in the next 15 20 minutes but First half is going to be a lot different than maybe people anticipated. Yeah, I can just uh, already, you know, I'm not in the locker room. You know, I'm here talking to you, but I know exactly what the coaches are saying, and they're trying to get their guys amped up to play in what they would call football weather uh, because uh, this is a a game that's going to be a mess at the beginning. Um, Lots of runs, uh, lots of ball security, lots of sliding. Uh, It'll be a... An interesting way to start the season for, for both squads. They're going to have to do some adjustments. You know, whatever game plan you had going into this game, especially for the first quarter, you might as well throw it out the window uh, and go <laughs> go look at what your bread and butter uh, run plays are because that's what you're going to be able to do. It's going to be hard to throw the football. It's going to be hard to see. The rain is pretty thick. Um, even though it's not uh, super heavy, You just it's the, the clarity for wide receivers, all of that, it's going to be a challenge. So, uh, both teams are uh, probably changing their scripts in the uh, the locker room. Also picking up a little bit more wind as the evening has progressed. Right now, kind of a straight east wind kind of blowing back into our faces here in the press box. So we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. But again, the rain should taper off here in the next 15, 20 minutes. So it's, it's really going to affect things right out of the gate. The wet conditions are going to affect things for the while. We'll see how the artificial turf drains here in Bethany as uh, we get closer to kickoff and as we go throughout the evening but we will be playing on schedule no lightning no thunder no uh, reason to delay 
at this point in the evening as we count down about 12 and a half minutes here to go before kickoff. Uh, but Landry, we talked to Coach Hayda earlier today, our first conversation with him yeah. uh, since spring ball, and you know he had lots to, lots of things to say. He was proud of a bunch of different areas of his team. What really stuck out to you from that? Yeah, well, I mean, when we sat down with him, before we even sat down in his office, he was talking about how healthy the team is, uh, which is something for the last, it seems like, two seasons – you know, health has been a struggle even from week one. Uh, so not having all 22 guys that you want to play ready to go really does affect your season. And so you just think even the first game last season, their starting quarterback, Gage Porter, goes down with an injury, right? Like that's how you start your season. It's pretty hard to recover. Uh, even though they had some great uh, great quarterback play last season, it's hard to recover when, you know, your leader goes down week one. But, but in general, just... The, Everyone was a little banged up. Uh, so he said uh, that there's some real health there. And Luke, he mentioned uh, new uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, Stephen Price, has done a great job. You want to say anything to that? Yeah, it, just talking with some of the guys at, at Media Day a few weeks back, um, the majority of them men- asking just, hey, how have things been going? A lot of them mentioned off-season conditioning and working with – with coach price and just the way he's been really pushing them in the weight room and whether it be just more attention to detail or different workouts uh and you can you can see it physically in a lot of these guys i mean gage had mentioned that he put on a lot of weight just from the weight that he had lost uh, Mm -hmm. from having to rehab with the torn labrum last year um you you look down the roster compared to last year there's there's a lot of guys who are 10 to 15 pounds up from a season ago and and that bodes well for a roster that you know any neutral observer would say hey there's there's a lot of heights and weights that don't really add up to the positions that these guys play yeah i mean traditionally snu you know they they recruit quick guys but quick guys aren't always big guys but uh the strength and conditioning has certainly helped that this year and you know just to put it in perspective you don't really think about what 10 pounds does uh for a player because you know we're just watching them you know collide on the field but when you have the the arm strength and the shoulder strength to really get inside of a guy if you're an offensive lineman he might be bigger than you but if you have the strength to kind of steer him around a little bit it really does make quite a bit of difference so those are small things that uh that, that's how you um use your off season effectively and that was one of the first things uh, coach said to us when we sat down you know one thing luke that also stuck out to me was um just how much he and when um, we did spring interviews um how much team unity seems to be uh up um across the board um so just a not and, and he wasn't saying that unity was bad last year but there just seems to be a more cohesiveness defense to offense uh, and just a, in all um, kind of those intangible ways, uh, the team seems to be um, where he wants them to be, both uh, in unity and in playing style. And he also mentioned, too, just the coaching staff in general, just uh, having a sense of camaraderie. And he, he mentioned to us just uh, them trying to get away and, and be good friends on the field and off the field as well. So. Yeah, we and yeah, we had a great talk with Coach Hayda earlier today. And... Um, we sat down for a more formal interview as well, so here's our pregame conversation with SNU head coach Dustin Hayda. And welcome into our pregame conversation with SNU head coach Dustin Hayda. The Crimson Storm opened the season this evening against the Weevils of Arkansas Monticello. And Dustin, uh, just take us through the off season. what you were pleased with, how would you describe it, and just the growth that you guys experienced. You know, we've had a really good – uh, we built on a really good spring, um, and then heading into that off season, we did had a really good off season with these guys. The the maturity uh, and growth of our of our redshirted freshmen has been has been really good. Um, those guys stepping up and and adding competitive competition to each uh, position has been good. So the young guys have been good, um, and then you know we've got 18 seniors and 37 lettermen coming back that have. Just played a ton of football in the in the Great American Conference, and so we just try to build on that and improve on on the leadership part of things, and continue to build our culture the way we want it, which I feel really good about. And and now we just want to play better football, um, and I think the experience that we have is is going to allow us to do that. 
you talked a lot last year about culture and the COVID year allowing you to do that as a new head coach. How have you seen that uh, manifest itself in the off season and, and through preseason camp? Well, our buy-in has been incredible, and, and you really start seeing that manifest itself in just the way guys handle their workouts and, and how you got to trust those guys over the summer. Um, a lot of guys made commitments to be here over the summer, which was great. And, and uh, so it's been good to see the responsibility and, and just the uptake of the cultural things that we talk about within those old guys and spreading that into the young guys and, and showing up in, in how they work when they're here and, and uh, being trusted over the summer to take care of business. And, and I feel like they did that. And so that's even spilled over into fall camp. It's been good. And, and the old guys are really doing a great job of coaching the younger cats up. And, and so – we feel really good about where we're at from a leadership standpoint, and, and uh, we're looking forward to going ahead with those guys. Roster-wise, you mentioned your guys are in great health across the board. Um, Personnel-wise, just had, how confident are you going into this season opener against the Weevils? Well, we feel really good about where we're at in our two deep. Um, there's not a lot of change because of injury. Um, and so coming out of fall camp, I think that's kind of everybody's goal. Um, we've we've reached that goal. We're our two deep is healthy, and and we feel really good about that. And so we're excited to get the thing started and and just play better football and 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 just attack the season starting today. The Weevils come in off a five and six season, pick seventh in the conference. What can we expect to see from them on both sides of the ball? Well, I think they'll be really similar to what they what they did last year. They've got a ton of guys back, particularly in their secondary and and. And so defensively, I think, you know, we're going to get a lot of the same looks that we had and, and they're going to try to, they're going to be big and physical and run really well. Um, they love to tackle in their secondary. And, and so I think a lot of that will be similar to the, the things they were doing last year. Um, offensively, you know, their quarterback's back and he's a great athlete and can, can run the show and, and really make good play, big plays for them. Uh, tight end is something they love to use in, in their RPO game and, and, just the use of their tight end is, is probably very similar to what they were going to do last year, we think. I mean, it's the first game, so nobody really knows. But we assume with the, you know, with the personnel they have back at key positions that they really found their identity last year offensively. And, and we expect more of the same um, of what they brought last year. You've had a lot of season openers in your football career, and this year be your second as a head coach. What's – What's the most exciting part about the season opener? Man, just getting everything started. So everybody is so optimistic, you know, through a spring uh, and then heading in into fall camp and then coming out of fall camp, the optimism just boils over. And so now it's it's always kind of a – you're just ready. You're just ready. And, and we're all ready to go, and, and our players are ready to go. Um, and so it's just an excitement level that, that – is unmatched really throughout and then playing on a Thursday at home is always good and, and it'll give the you know those general students that are here on campus will will have a chance to come out on a Thursday night which is always exciting and, and there's just a buzz and excitement about getting everything started. Dustin thank you so much for your time as always best of luck tonight against Arkansas Monticello. Appreciate you thank you. Hey, welcome back to SNU Football Stadium. Just a quick programming note, we will get the video up and running as soon as we are able. Uh, just the way the press box is situated here in Bethany and the way that we have to operate. Can't stick the camera out the window in the rain. Got to protect the equipment or else you won't have any home broadcast the rest of the year. That's right. So. We'll, uh, we'll be doing audio only. It'll be just an old-fashioned radio broadcast for the first part. As soon as the rain stops, we, which should be in the next few minutes, we will get that up and going. But we'll have everything for you just like normal as soon as we are able. So, appreciate your patience and understanding. Not, certainly not the way anybody wants to start the season well, on either side. But uh, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, and that's what we're going to do here. Everybody in the conference in action this evening. Four Oklahoma schools hosting tonight at three in addition to SNU. Harding down at East Central, a big opportunity for the Tigers 
here in the season opener, getting the defending conference champions at home, breaking in a new quarterback. Should be an interesting one down in Ada. Washita Baptist is at Oklahoma Baptist this evening. Oklahoma Baptist replacing a lot from some great teams over the past mm. few seasons. Uh, and unfortunately for the Bison, uh, they do not have artificial turf in Shawnee. So that is going to be <laughs> quite the slop fest over there this evening. Arkansas Tech down in Durant at Southeastern. Northwestern at Southern Arkansas tonight. And Southwestern over at Henderson State. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff. Everybody else kicking off here in just a few moments at 6 p.m. So Landry, as we SNU will be receiving to start, and we'll be moving left to right here in the first quarter. As they gather to take the field, the Weevils out on the field already. What do you want to see from SNU tonight? Yeah, start off strong. First quarters have been challenging for the storm the last several years and so winning the first quarter I think is a uh, really a great simple mile marker um, for the offense in particular so defensively uh, they do what they do and so you want consistency out of them but offensively you know maybe one or two good drives get a touchdown on the board in the first quarter this was a really tight game last year and a game that they should have won and so uh, you know, you hope to see them have that confidence going into this game, knowing that, man, this game slipped right out of their fingers last year. Very winnable game against uh, a less experienced Monticello team. Yeah, the, the slow start last year was killer. SNU was down 30 to seven at mm. halftime. Five of their first first five of their six first half possessions ended in three and out. Uh, it was just not a good start. And SNU, as a whole last year was outscored in the first half 277 to 91 the first halves i mean that's a three to one yeah ratio there uh just the first halves were not good for snu all season long and coach Ada mentioned they've been emphasizing starting fast right out of the gates having confidence right out of the gates so i'll be uh, very interested to see how this first possession goes for snu jarvis davis will be getting the start at quarterback tonight uh, Gage Porter will be the starter going forward. Just a little internal thing for the first quarter tonight. Uh, SNU also injury-wise without defensive tackle Cameron Flowers this evening and uh, without wide receiver Andrew Tisdale as well. But SNU will receive to start the 2022 season as Donald May and Josh Johnson head back to receive the kick. Josh Johnson... 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to open the game against Southwestern last year. He's got the big play ability. It'll be Marquise McKnight, transfer from Grambling University, who will send it away for the Weevils. The Weevils, white helmets, white tops, green pants. SNU with the all-new gray jerseys, white helmets with the lightning bolt. We are set to go here in the 2022 season. Thanks for joining us here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel. Again, we'll have video as soon as we are able. And the season is underway as McKnight sends this one deep. It's going to be Donald May from the four. Moves up the middle of the field, heads left, and he's going to be taken down aggressively at the 18-yard line. That was Demarius White with the takedown, and that is where SNU will start first and ten, moving left to right here in the first quarter. Well, Donald May, the returner, redshirt freshman, and, uh, man, they, they speak highly of him, and you can tell he's a redshirt freshman. Uh, trying to find that hole, maybe reading a little too long. He's going to have to punch that, but that will come in time. So looking forward to a good first series here from the offense. So Jarvis Davis will step in at quarterback, the junior from Freeport, Texas. 1,200 yards passing a season ago. Fakes the give on the jet. Picks his way up the middle. He's got space across the 25, across the 30, before he is taken down by number two, Greg Hooks. And Hooks comes up a little shaken there after the gain of 14 yards. It'll be first down and 10 from the 32. Coach Hanna said that they were going to run quarterback jet sweep. No change in game plan so far. Uh, just a good read by Davis, finding the hole, making the good read not to hand it off to the jet sweep, um, and just running towards the green grass. 
Two wide to the right, one to the left. Roberts, Asa Robertson to the left. Jarrell Farr, Donovan Hill to the right. Robertson, the man in motion. The give is to Carlos Zepeda. He picks his way up the middle, up to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. A gain of three is not... Uh, uh, not a bad play. It's not the most attractive play in the world, but but this is what SNU thrives on. Just chunk plays like this, and this is how you establish a good drive. You get a quick first down, you get a good chunk play, you get your offensive line going downhill. 13.07 to go. First quarter, SNU moving left to right from the far hash, second and seven. Far goes in motion, stops at the end of the line. Davis pulls it out of Zapata's belly, spins away from the tackle. And he picks up three more up to the 38-yard line where it will bring up third down and we'll call it four right in the middle of the field. Yeah, no hurry from the Crimson Storm offense. This is one thing Coach Hayda mentioned, that the pace uh, in this offseason of getting the plays in has been uh, what they want. So they have 10 seconds to snap the ball here. They seem under control uh, and using the clock well. Three wide to the left, two tight ends out, split out, and a tight end on the right side, Davis. Following his blocker, Zapata, up the middle. He's going to be stoned right in the middle of the line by a host of Weevil defenders right at the 39-yard line. Ball popped out when the officials rule him down. So fourth down, and SNU got one first down, but will be forced to punt, and senior Ryan Reed on to kick this one away. Reed averaged nearly 42 yards a kick last season. And he'll have it right in the middle of the field. It'll be Caleb Jacobs, number 82, back deep. For the Weevils, 11.35 to go here in the first quarter. SNU picked up one first down, punting it away. Reed, high hanging punt. It's caught up, bounces at the 25, and it will die right about there at the 23-yard line. 11.20 to go first quarter. Weevils and the Storm, scoreless here in Bethany. So SNU going on defense for the first time here this evening and we'll see quarterback Demilon Brown the junior from Luxora, Arkansas terrific season last year, led the team in rushing 640 yards on the ground 2400 yards through the air everybody in tight on first down it's actually going to be the backup quarterback there, Edwin Kleinpeter in on first down, trying to Mix things up a little bit. It's a three-yard gain out to the 26-yard line. And now Brown and the more speed group come That's in right. for That's the right. Weevils. Yeah, it looked like just trying to run some Tebow package in right there. <laughs> just a old, good old-fashioned quarterback power. Five wide, spread out. Brown in the shotgun. Quarterback draw all the way. Picks his way across the 30. Spins across the 35. Up to the 36-yard line for the first down for Arkansas Monticello. And that's going to be the matchup right there. It's not the quarterback on the linebacker. Instead, it's the linebacker shedding the block of the tackle, who's kind of the solo blocker uh, for the quarterback there. So SNU's inside linebacker is going to have to make a quick read on that and get off a block. Man in motion for the Weevils. He gets the handoff from Brown, goes across the 40-yard line for he's taken down by Dylan Bauer. That's the running back, Gennaro Scott, sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And SNU with a player down in the backfield. Can't tell who that is at this point. Might be. Looks like it might be Trent Smith. Number seven. The senior safety. So we'll take a quick pause while he's injured. And come back with more. Ten minutes to go here in the first quarter. Scoreless between the Crimson Storm and Arkansas Monticello.
Welcome back. Trent Smith heads off the field under his own strength with the training staff. Second down and five for Arkansas Monticello from the left hash. Brown rolls to his right, facing pressure from Jamari Johnson. He escapes, fires it back across the middle of the field, and it's going to be caught. Number 84 for Arkansas Monticello. It's Ben Colligan. Freshman tight end. He's right at the marker. Yeah, and it, I mean, just tremendous pressure and a good read. Uh, I think the, the blitzer was Johnson on that play. Correct me if I'm wrong, Luke. But uh, great read. You just got to get more than just a, a, a hand on him. You got to wrap him up and drive him to the ground. So third and one. Brown gives it to Scott right up the middle. He's got space. Sheds a tackler. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Arkansas Monticello. As Gennaro Scott... Takes it 55 yards to the house on third and one. And the Weevils strike first here in 2022. Yeah, and you know, they SNU sent some pressure on that uh, that last play, third and one. That's typically what you're going to try to do. But if you miss on, on uh, the first level, it leaves your safety on an island to make a play. And unfortunately, you just couldn't wrap up uh, the running back on that play. And uh, after the safety, there's no one else behind him. Monticello forced to burn a timeout. Here on the extra point attempt. Didn't have the correct personnel on the field. And Coach Hayden mentioned that you know, depth was great in the secondary. Good at the mm -hmm. middle with the inside linebackers. But outside linebackers, defensive line, a spot not necessarily of complete concern. Right. But just a spot. If you had to do a hierarchy, defensive line, right. outside linebacker was a spot that there that would be near the bottom of that, of that group. Just if you had to put them somewhere. Yeah, and that touchdown, it's going to look like it's on the secondary there because they're the one that missed that tackle. And, and yeah, you have to make that tackle, but... The secondary shouldn't be making a tackle on a power or a dive. You know, that should be defensive line and linebackers. McKnight on to attempt the extra point. Spot, hold, and kick. And the Weevils extend their lead to 7-0. 9-0-6 to go here in the first quarter. As Arkansas Monticello draws first blood. And we'll take a quick break and be back with more after this. This is SNU Football. Welcome back to Bethany, Arkansas Monticello leading Southern Nazarene 7 0 with 9.06 to go here in the first quarter. Just a quick update. We don't have video just yet due to the rain still coming down here in Bethany. Need to protect the equipment just the way that our setup is here in the press box, but we will have video just as soon as we are able to get that camera out here on the platform. Shouldn't be too much longer, can't imagine. That will be more than another 5-10 minutes, hopefully. A lot of pooling on the field, starting to recede a little bit from the middle out. Thank goodness for artificial surfaces. That's here right. in Bethany, unlike down in Shawnee, where Washita Baptist and Oklahoma Baptist playing on grass this evening. McKnight sends this one away, down toward Donald May, and he muffs it inside the 5, picks it up at the 3. Picks his way up the middle, across the 15, across the 20. Spins away from a couple tacklers before McKnight, the kicker, with a nice wrap-up at the 27-yard line. And Donald May made something out of almost a near-disastrous yeah. play 
and nearly broke it away. A nice tackle by the kicker there. That's right. Yeah, big kicker, man. He probably played some linebacker at his high school days. Hey, but May, you know, Luke, you said he muffed it, and I guess technically he did, but when it's raining this hard, is that not just a part of the catch? Yeah, so Lots of grace. Yeah, but he hit the hole hard that time. Uh, uh, good improvement there. Good hard run. Jarvis Davis, a quarterback for SNU. Ball in the right hash. Jaron Alvarado, the man in motion to the left side. And a flag comes out from the head linesman. Looks like we're going to get a false start here on the Crimson Storm. 50 Couldn't quite catch the number there, but false start on the Crimson Storm. Moves him back five yards. It'll be first and 15. For S and U. 8.58 to go first quarter. Weebles leading 7 0. Alvarado again across the formation to the left side. Davis gives it to Zapata. Zapata hits the hole hard. It's most of that penalty yardage back up to the 27 yard line where it'll be second down and 11 yards to go. Number 92, Maurice Loda Valley in there on the tackle for the Weevils. Yeah, and SNU uh, has uh, two tight ends right in right now, um, or really three. Um, that's nothing to be surprised by. Um, Coach Ada said that we should be, we should be expecting some three tight end packages because they want to run some power football, and uh, and they believe that those guys give them another option to to run that well. Certainly, the rain might be affecting things a little bit as far as that goes. Zapata again picking his way up across the 30 out to the 32 yard line. So a gain of five on second down. Brings up a third and manageable seven. Eddie on Bata lost his helmet. Has to come off for one play. Dalen Smith also heads off. A couple speedsters out there now. Farr and Asa Robertson back into the game for SNU. Yeah, and Farr is a guy, and Asa, too. Both of those guys, well experienced last year, got a ton of reps in a year where maybe they thought they, they might not get that many. So looking for big years from both of them. Farr also sporting number zero this year after wearing 15 last year. Said he wanted number two, but teammate Eli Calhoun wasn't going to give it up. Here's a snap. Davis back to pass, and a flag comes in from the back judge. It looks like we're going to get a delay of game penalty here on SNU. Didn't quite get the snap off in time. Yeah, and Davis looked like he signaled for a timeout, uh, but I don't know, maybe a half-hearted attempt for a signal for a timeout, so uh, take that penalty. Man, this is not where you want to be. You had third and median, and now you're at third and long. Three wide to the left, one to the right for SNU. Ball in the middle of the field. Davis bobbles the snap, picks it up. Fires it down the field. He's got Robertson. He's got his man. B and he goes right through his hands. Incomplete. Down at the Weevils 30-yard line. He had a step out there on Marshall Lloyd, the safety. And a great throw yeah. from Davis. I mean, yeah, he it, it, Davis drops the snap, picks the ball up, and, and it's supposed to be a fake screen. He doesn't even have time to fake the screen, and the pass is wide open down the seam. Perfect throw. It doesn't even didn't even look like he had his fingers on the, the football well. Just uh, rainy conditions make that a hard catch. Ryan Reed on to punt once again. Pops this one out there towards Jacobs. It bounds inside the 20-yard line, inside the 15, and a great roll there from Ryan Reed as it goes all the way down to the 12-yard line. So that's going to be a 59-yard punt yeah. for Ryan Reed. 6.52 to go first quarter. Arkansas Monticello leading Southern Nazarene. 7 nothing. We'll take a break and be right back after this. This is SNU football.
Welcome back to Bethany, Arkansas Monticello, moving right to left here on their second possession. The give to Gennaro Scott in the backfield, taken down by Paul Thonsgaard, a redshirt freshman from Liberty, Texas, with a nice play in the backfield. And Scott managed to fall forward for a gain of one. It'll be second down and nine for the Weevils. Two wide to the left. Brown takes the snap. Again gives it to Scott. Jamari Johnson coming in off the edge. Takes him down at the 22-yard line after a gain of three. So third down and six here for Arkansas Monticello. Big opportunity here for SNU to get off the field. Clock moving. 6-10 to go first quarter. We will spread it out. Three wide left, two to the right. Flag drops. It's offsides on SNU. Shot down the field is going to be intercepted by Eli Calhoun. But I believe this one is coming back. As Marcus Sowell jumped into the neutral zone. That's going to give the Weevils five yards and make it third down and one. Just unfortunate there. Great athletic play by Eli Calhoun. Yeah, it's certainly a great play, and it's just frustrating, but you have an opportunity here to get your, fo your football team off the field. So third and one. Klein-Peter back in at quarterback. Jumbo package extraordinaire. Plows into the middle line. Did not get it! No, sir! Trent Smith in there. Nick Blanchard in there. And the Crimson defense holds. Fourth down. Yeah, and those are the kind of big plays that you need to make, you know. Typically, or just in the past, it seems like the first quarter has just been a, uh, uh, it's such a tough time to get off the field as a defense. And all of a sudden, the offense got the football again with five minutes to go in the first quarter. McKnight on to punt. Asa Robertson back deep. High snap. McKnight fields it, sends it away. High hanging punt. Drops down at the 37, takes a Monticello bounce, and will die inside the 25-yard line. So a nice putt there by McKnight. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter. We welcome you in on the video side. Glad to have that back. Now the rain has started to move away, and the flood on the field recedes. And <laughs> If you look carefully on our shot off to the left, you might be able to catch the spectacular rainbow That's we've right, got man. over here. You see that off in the distance. About as vivid as a rainbow as I've ever personally seen. Yeah, man. So 4.59 to go first quarter. The Weevils lead 7-0. But SNU with a nice defensive stop. Got the speed package in again here. Here's Davis as Robertson goes in motion. Davis gives it to Ramirez. No, he kept it himself. Picks his way up to the 25-yard line. It's going to be second down and three. Yeah, the speed package still staying out on the field. You know, they like this. They can run bubbles out of this. They can make mis create mismatches in the secondary. Um, but also, it gives really three extra running backs here uh, for the Storm. Two wide to the right. Two back set here. Ramirez and Farr. Now, Farr comes in motion to the right side of the formation. Davis, quick slant, looking for Robertson. It was deflected at the line of scrimmage. Nearly intercepted there by number 22 for the Weevils. That's Demarion Holmes. It looks like Tanner Corson was the one blitzing linebacker who maybe got his fingers on it, made that slant or stop route, uh, just changed course nearly for an interception. So third down and seven here for SNU. Ball in the middle of the field. Three wide to the right. Davis takes the snap. Rolling to his right. Fires it toward the sideline. Overshot Jarrell Farr. 
as the linebacker Damaris White came flying in and took down Davis. And it'll be fourth down and the Crimson Storm will punt once again. So three possessions for SNU so far in the first quarter. One first down on the opening drive. And that is it thus far for the Crimson Storm. I mean, on that opening drive, too, they can control the, the time of play. Reed sends this one, a wobbler. Downfield hits it about the 37-yard line and bounds down to about the 33-yard line before the Crimson Storm touch it down and a little fisticuffs in the middle of the field between the Weevils and the Crimson Storm. Yeah. Flags fly. We'll see who the officials assess this penalty on. Yeah, hard hard to hard to tell there. Both uh, doing a little finger pointing. Uh, I don't know if there was a, a punch thrown. Uh, certainly not a ref in the vicinity, although there is a flag on the ground. And they are going to assess it on SNU. And no offsetting or anything. So it's just a 15 yard penalty going to be on SNU. Oh, correction, it is going to be on Arkansas Monticello. And, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach Coach Ada had some constructive criticism. <laughs> yeah, and then was informed that it wasn't, in fact, on the Crimson Storm and then thanked the ref Indeed. for his good call. Indeed. So, so they marked that off 15 yards from the dead ball spot at the 33-yard line. So Arkansas Monticello will start at their own 18-yard line, 354, to go first quarter. This will be the third possession of the quarter for Arkansas Monticello. A lot of back and forth. The only score thus far, 55-yard touchdown run by Gennaro Scott. Gives us our 7-0 score in favor of the Weevils. Brown turns and gives to Scott. Cut off in the backfield. Cole Cezik in there to clean it up. Hits a loss of two. Back to the 17-yard line. Yeah, and just an experienced player making a great play right there. Uh, you can't, can't ask for much better than that. You know, it is interesting. They seem to be pressuring away from the boundary, or I guess, yeah, away from the boundary, uh, almost a press. So just cover two here for the defense. The sun is out here in Bethany, and now it's going to be a nice evening for us. Brown takes the snap back to pass, looking left down the middle. He's got time, now rolls to his right, fires it down the sideline. He's got a receiver, hits him in stride. And he fumbled the football. It's loose, but Monticello recovers it. Down at the SNU 32-yard line, it was Isaiah Cross who got free down the sideline and was punched out from behind. I believe that was Cam Wells on the far side. But Johnny on the spot for Arkansas Monticello to preserve the possession was Jordan Mansfield. And the Weevils gain 10 yards out of the fumble down to the SNU 31-yard line. And that's just a good matchup for Monticello. They have a linebacker on a speedy receiver. They'll take that all day. Brown turns and gives to Scott running left. Cuts it back into the middle of the field. Met by Trent Smith, but he falls across the 25-yard line down to the 24. Gain of 7 on first down. 2.53 to go in the first quarter. The Weevils knocking on the door of the red zone. They go quickly here. Brown again turns and gives to Scott running left. Malik Ritchie gets through, but it's going to be Jamari Johnson who finally takes Scott down at the 21-yard line. They're going to give him enough for the first down, so it'll be first and 10 just outside the 20-yard line of the Crimson Storm. Yeah, Malik Ritchie in perfect position there. Just can't grab onto any part of the jersey. But that's what you want to see from your defensive end. You need him to, to shed that block and get his arms free so he can make a tackle on those stretch plays. Great crowd starting to filter in here in Bethany. A lot of people finally getting out of their that's cars. Right. But a good crowd on the SNU side. Brown running quarterback draw all the way up the middle, taken down at the 15-yard line by Marcus Sowell. The sophomore from Rockwell, Texas, had a great season last year, led the team with six or with five sacks, six tackles for a loss, had two in the season opener. 
against the Weevils last year. Down to 140 and counting here in the first quarter. Second and five. Brown gives to Jacobs around the left side. Met down at the 13-yard line by Eli Calhoun. They'll give him the 12, so a three-yard pickup. It'll be third down and two. A big opportunity here for SNU to keep the Weevils out of a goal-to-go situation. Yeah, and if, if you're the Storm, it's run all the way here. You know, you, you might they might throw play action, but they've been so successful on the run. Just be ready for, ready for it to come right at you. 12 on the play clock. Brown turns, gives to Scott, trying to stretch it out to the right side, but Cezik got him down at the line of scrimmage. Trent Smith in there as well. The ball popped out. But the official said he was down. It'll be fourth and one at the 11-yard line. Yeah, and almost no question. Monticello going for it here. Brown lines up in the shotgun. Fourth and less than a yard. Fakes, boots it out to the left. He's got lots of space. Ten, five, out races Trent Smith to the pylon. And it's a touchdown for Arkansas Monticello. Yeah, just a naked boot, you know, on that, that play. And inside linebackers, defensive ends, all went with the run. And unfortunately, it left lots and lots of green grass for the walk-in touchdown. So Arkansas Monticello goes up 13-0 with 20 seconds to go in the opening quarter. McKnight on for the extra point for the Weevils. And a delay on the snap caused a false start from the line and the kicker there. So they'll buy, back that up five yards. Don't often see the kicker false start. <laughs> you want to know how it's the first game, or you want to know why it's the first game of the season? Because you have a delay of game on your first PAT. Under your second PAT, you jump off sides. So that won't happen every, every time. They back it up to the seven-yard line. Snap, hold, and kick on the way, and true from McKnight. So the Weevils extend their lead to 14-0 with 20 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And Landry, you talked about SNU needing to start fast. Not exactly what has transpired here in the opening 15 minutes. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's just a couple big plays that are really killing them. It's not like they're defensively. It's not like they're being undisciplined. It's just uh, taking advantage of plays when you have it. You know, you, ha you have a linebacker on a on a fast wide receiver. You should have safety help over the top. Just a mental error. Uh, and then that that run play, you know, you're just not getting hands on at the, the first level. Um, those, are, those are correctable things. So defensively, you know, you can't hang your head too low. But offensively, you really gotta so there seems to be no juice and energy. Uh, and you know, one of the things Coach Hayda said to us was uh, that they need to expect to make big plays, and uh, that's not something that they've they've experienced a bunch uh, here at SNU. But uh, they have it in them, and they don't need to wait for it to happen. They need to go do it now uh, and know that they can make those plays. So we, the offense, really has to uh, has to kind of find it in themselves to make a big play to get themselves back into this game. May and Johnson back deep to receive for the Crimson Storm. McKnight sends it away, and it is going to go through the end zone for the touchback. The Weevils making a concerted effort there to make sure to try not to kick it to Josh Johnson. <laughs> and you saw Johnson and May kind of swapping sides at the yes. kick. That Johnson could try to go field that one. Yeah, just a tremendous returner. Had a great some great returns last year for sure, uh, but man, uh, it seems like McKnight is slowly edging closer and closer to the out of bounds over here. Maybe he feels confident in his leg, but but uh, he's about a yard away from kicking it out of bounds. That'd be helpful. We take it. Yes, and you takes the field. Gage Porter out there at quarterback. The one quarter sit down over, and he's got it. 
right up the middle, gets to the outside, trying to shed a tackler, but he cannot shed Daquan Street after a gain of two. But shed a couple to get to that point. And that's how the first quarter is going to come to an end here in Bethany. 15 minutes in the books in the 2022 season. Arkansas Monticello leading by a couple touchdowns. 14 to nothing over Southern Nazarene at the Crimson Storm with the ball when we come back. This is SNU Football. Welcome back to Bethany. Second down and eight for SNU as they move right to left here in the second quarter, trailing Arkansas Monticello 14 0. Colby Branch out at wide receiver, split out to the left side here for SNU, and Branch missed all of last year with an injury, so good to see the sophomore from Fairfield, Texas, back out there. Perez, the man in motion. Porter gives it to Angel Ramirez up the middle across the 30 yard line, and he will gain. Now four up to the 31. It'll be third down. We'll call it a long four. Need to get to the 35-yard line. Ball just outside the 31. Later, we've seen SNU at times last year have really good success between the tackles, but that's not necessarily their their forte offensively right. as far as what they want to do on a consistent basis. Yeah, certainly they want to use their speed to their advantage and also they love the option. All kinds of option, any kind of option you can think of, they want to run it. And uh, that doesn't always involve the tackle box. Five on the play clock, two wide receivers right, one to the left. Porter takes the snap, fakes the give, rolls out to the left. Now he's being pressured, escapes Rayma Getter in the backfield. He's got some blockers looking for help, still looking for help. Fires it over toward the middle of the field looking for fellows, and it falls incomplete. Down at the Monticello 47-yard line, and Gage Porter gives you that escapability there. Yes. And yeah. uh, once he gets breaks contained in the backfield, you're not quite sure what's going to happen sometimes, <laughs> but unable to connect down the field on that pass play, and SNU will punt once again. Yeah, the first person to greet uh, Porter off the sidelines, Coach Hayda, probably tell him to eat that throw the next time, but, but he really can make something out of nothing. A bit of a low snap for Ryan Reed. Booming kick. Bounces at the 23, bounces inside the 10. Jacobs fields it. He's inside the 5. Can he escape? He can. He does escape. He gets up to the 9-yard line. Nearly was taken down at the 1 mm. by Jalen Mays. Or excuse me, Aaron Randall down there. But he did escape up to the 9-yard line. And that's where the Weevils will put it in play. First and 10. So Landry, one quarter in the books. Yep. What does SNU do to change what the first 15 minutes showed uh yeah just consistency i mean if you if you can't get first downs you know it's going to be hard to sustain drives your defense is going to get more tired you know these are simple things that anybody just watching the game can can see but but really you do just need to it's not even scoring touchdowns right now it's just finding some kind of offensive rhythm so you have some plays that have worked well the rain has stopped so your playbook then opens up kind of exponentially. You know, it's almost sunny, and with these the, these uh, turf fields, it's going to be dry relatively quickly. So throwing the football is going to be a lot easier. So I wouldn't be surprised to see SNU uh, look towards their screen game, something that they, they couldn't have run in the first quarter, try to get some of their speed going, some of their downfield blocking uh, that they kind of pride themselves on going better. Um, and then defensively, just settling those guys down after two big uh, mental bus plays and just being in control of the game. 
right? It's it's a very tangible game. It's not out of reach, uh, but being in control of of their emotions and also just knowing their keys and trusting the the philosophy of defense that they have. So Monticello moving left to right, first and ten at their own ten yard line. So we get the ready for play. Signal here. Scott, the running back behind Brown. Brown fakes it. Rolling out. Sowell nearly had him around the ankles. Brown looking to the sideline and throws it into the SNU bench. Good coverage down the field there by SNU. Yeah, absolutely. And, Luke, you might have to teach me a rule. The tight end, number 89 for Monticello, got leveled at the line of scrimmage. Legal play? Or looked like he was going out for a little pop pass, but... Maybe we got away with one. At or behind the line of scrimmage, it's fair game. Okay. My understanding. So second and ten. Two wide receivers right. Brown, back to pass. He's got time. Pressure up the middle. Now he's going deep. Ball is up, and it falls incomplete. Looking out there for number ten, Isaiah Cross, and Colton Morris and Josh Johnson were back there. And yep. If we'd had a head turn, might have had an interception there. Yes. That wall was just hanging up there. Yes, absolutely. And and just good downfield coverage. You got two guys in the area making a play on the ball. You'll take that. Third and ten. Five wide receivers set for the Weevils. Watch out for the draw here. SNU crowd making some noise as it has filled in nicely over the last 20 minutes or so. Brown back to pass, looking right down the middle. He's got his man Jacobs and a huge hit. Intercepted on the deflection. Trent Smith. Eli Calhoun laid the wood. It popped three and Trent Smith on the deflection. And SNU in business inside the 30-yard line. Now that is a hit. It looks like Monticello coach Hud Jackson looking for a flag on that play. He yeah. is beside himself over there. He can be upset, but, man, that was square on the numbers, right on the football. The football launched into the air and luckily found a Crimson Storm player's arms. So the first big play of the season comes courtesy of the unit that lots of guys on the team were hyping up, the SNU secondary. And it's first and ten at the 27 of Monticello. Carlos Thomas, the running back for SNU out there. We got a false start here on SNU coming up. Yeah, and it looks like Andy Carnitas is the one with just a quick little lean right before the snap. Cardenas, the sophomore left tackle from Mesquite. Had a frustrating injury last year. He suffered in the second game of the year. Just unable to cover from that to get back last year. So first and 15 here. Ball's on the ground. Porter picks it up. Trying to escape pressure, and he can't. Back at the 48-yard line. Taken down back there by Aunt Alferny Hankins. So a big loss back to the 47. So now it's second down and 30 for SNU. Yeah, turf not completely dry yet. Maybe some first game jitters, but yeah, that's that's uh, those just small mental mistakes. You know, you just had a big play, and these are the things in film that are going to drive you crazy tomorrow when you see the good field position you're in inside your opponent's 30 yard line, and then all of a sudden you're back at midfield. Ball in the middle of the field, five on the play clock here for SNU. Fellows goes out to the right. Porter. Back to pass, now it's a quarterback draw. He's got blockers, gets outside to the left side, across the 40, down to the 39-yard line, taken down there by Dondi Fuller, the UNLV transfer. So Porter gains eight, down to the 39, where it will be third down and 22. Breeze has come up from the south, so would help in a field goal yeah. situation here if SNU can... You know, get 15 yards or so. Yeah. Really get into some good range for Ryan Reed. 11.52 to go. Second quarter, 14 to nothing. Arkansas Monticello. 
third and 20. Porter rolls right, floats it to the sideline, just a little bit too tall for Colby Branch as he's decked into the Monticello bench. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, and you got to punt here and try to pin him deep. You have, in my opinion, the best punter in the, the conference. You're going to try to hang that ball up there and make them fair catch it. But, uh, you, know, this, you know, this drive is kind of polarizing, right? Like you have some plays that seem to show kind of the explosiveness that the offense can have and what Porter brings to the table, but, but also just the mental errors that back you up. Reed has it. The high end over end kick angling for the corner and it goes out of bounds inside the five yard line. They spot it at the four and the senior from Burleson does his job to perfection with 11.33 to go before halftime. Arkansas Monticello leads 14 to nothing with the ball when we come back. Welcome back to Bethany SNU trailing Arkansas Monticello 14 nothing 11:33 to go here in the second quarter jumbo package here for Arkansas Monticello pinned at their own four yard line. Klein Peter is the quarterback, 6'1", 280. Big fella standing in his end zone, running right, trying to bounce it outside and he'll gain two yards up to the six. Yeah, 60, two. Nathan Jewell for Monticello loses his helmet. He'll have to come off. I believe he will would have been off anyway. 280 is quite the quarterback. Yes. Also number zero. I mean, both of these are are pretty incredible. So That'll bring up second and seven. Five wide here for the Weevils. Brown back to pass. Look, hits outside to Jacobs. Across the 15. He got the first down before he's going to be wrestled down at the 20-yard line. Officials blew the play dead. Emmanuel Obina came out of the pile with the football. The officials had ruled forward progress, had stopped up at the 20-yard line. Yeah, um, you know, unfortunately for the Crimson Storm, because they have given up a deep pass play, kind of in a, a hybrid man coverage, they're playing pretty soft zone right now, and so that just little 8-yard, 10-yard hitch route is wide open. Five wide again. Brown back to pass. Outside. He's got his man. Josh Johnson ushers Mansfield out of bounds after a gain of seven and got an SNU player down at the 35 yard line. Not sure who that is from our vantage point. We'll take we'll step aside for a quick moment.
Cole Cizik, the injured player for SNU, able to walk off under his own power. One of those veterans in the middle, the senior from Elgin, Oklahoma. Played a lot of football yeah. here for SNU. His 34th game across four seasons. Second and three. Brown back to pass outside. It is caught by Mansfield. He's taken down by Ben Rutherford. He's a redshirt freshman from Carrollton, Texas, but it's a gain of five and enough for the first down. Yeah, Monticello just picking on the soft zone right here and trying to find the mismatches. SNU with a five wide is being forced to put linebackers on quick, fast wide receivers. Brown quarterback draw this time. He's running to the right, cuts it up the middle of the field. He's decked by Calhoun after a gain of eight. Dylan Bauer down on the field right there holding his left arm. Calhoun was in there on the tackle and Bauer will head off. Bauer dealt with injuries a lot last yeah. season. Saying he was fully healthy, ready to go, and just got a little banged up there. So it'll be second down and one at the 42-yard line after the gain of nine by Brown. Brown turns and gives to Scott, picks his way around the right side, misses a tackler, and Josh Johnson finally takes him down at the 48-yard line. Gain of six, and another first down for the Weevils. Now Eli Calhoun a little shaken up, and he hobbles off. It's a lot of players going down for SNU here on yeah. this drive. Just looks looks like he's being treated for a cramp on the sideline over here. Brown back to pass, looking left, fires it out to the right side. It's cross. He's got it. Dances down the sideline to the 37-yard line. Or he's ushered out of bounds by Cam Wells. You know, nothing fancy going on with Monticello here. They're just running play action. They're just trying to get them in, in tight on the runs, and they're throwing quick little out routes, and the coverage just seems to be a little confused. Maybe he's just not, not used to working together, but looks a little off. Brown fakes the handoff, rolls right, looking for his tight end. Number 86, Caleb Bonine, but... That falls incomplete. Pressure by Marcus Sowell off the edge. Yeah, another little play action boot. SNU a little more uh, under control this time. Struggling, getting set up. Brown goes quickly, gives to Scott. Dancing in the backfield. Bauer broke through, but Scott broke the tackle. And he got down the sideline right at the marker after a gain of 10. We'll see if that is enough for the first down. It is enough for the first down. Dylan Bauer had him right yeah. at the line of scrimmage, but Scott able to squirt away. You know, with a quick running back like Scott, you know, Bauer does. He makes a good read, and he's in the right position. He's just a little high on that tackle. And so a good experience running back like that is just going to put his arm right in the center of your shoulder pads and create space and separation. That's exactly what he does. 7.42 and counting here in the first half. Monticello on the move. The give is to Scott around the right side. Met at the 25-yard line. Aaron Randall with a nice stick after a gain of one. Yeah, and, and uh, that that's a, a clever play by Monticello, but uh, one that SNU sniffed out from the beginning. You put Scott outside on your outside receiver, and then you motion him in. If you're a linebacker, you're thinking the running back who's playing wide receiver is going to get the ball. They want to get the ball in his hands, and that's exactly what happens. Met at the line of scrimmage. Good tackle. Second and nine from the 25-yard line. 14-0 Arkansas Monticello. Seven minutes to go before halftime. This drive started at the Weevils four. Brown back to pass. Looking right. Fires right to the sidelines. It's low and incomplete. He was looking for LeCedric Smith. Team's leading returning receiver. 34 catches, 500 yards a season ago. So third and long here for Arkansas Monticello and the SNU defense needs to make a stand with 6.55 to go in the first half. Yeah, and they're going to go empty again here. You know, probably watching for crossing routes uh, on this one or maybe a flood concept to, to try to create space. Three wide left, two to the right. 
Brown, it's a quarterback draw all the way. Picks, missed the tackle, 20, 15, 10, 5. Keeps his feet and he powers into the end zone for the Monticello touchdown. SNU had him back at about the 25 yard line, but Brown was able to slip a couple tackles and he goes in for the 25 yard score. Yeah, and that drive is just demor uh, demoralizing. You know, five yards here, three yards there, ten yards here. And then you finally get him to a third and ten, and you give up a touchdown on a quarterback draw. And it's a, it's a great play call because you, you know there's going to be space, but you have him dead to rights in the backfield. McKnight out to attempt his third extra point of the evening. And he sends that one. Up and through. So with 6.45 to go in the second quarter, our new score, Arkansas Monticello 21, and the Crimson Storm 0. And Landry, this drive has to result in, if nothing else, just a, a positive, positive drive, move the ball down yeah. the field uh, just to give confidence. You know, Coach Hayda talked to us about the guys needing to have confidence and trying to instill confidence in the guys from the get-go that they can make the plays that they need to. And, you know, you go down like this and give up a 96-yard touchdown right. drive, that's, that's certainly going to take a hit that you have to overcome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and being down 21-0, to zero, you know, th there's still a lot of football left. But, yeah, I mean, y you really do just need to have some confidence in what you do as a football team. And, uh, and that's something that, you know, coach was saying that is is hoped to be kind of installed in the young guys and uh, learned from the older guys and uh, again there's a lot of football left and last year was 30 to 7 at halftime but they, they really do just need to make a play McKnight sends this one away it's a high end over in kick and it's going to be taken by May at the 10 Tries to cut across, makes a nice move at the 30. Tries to cut it back across the field. 40, 45, 50. He's got space. Does he have the speed? 35, 30. Oh, he sent a man to the ground. Cuts it back inside at the 30. Down to the 26-yard line. <laughs> what a run by Donald May on the return. And this SNU crowd hyped up now. Yeah, man, and just, just trying to make a play, right? Like, he's he's not doing anything creative there. I mean, he was very creative, but but he's just running hard and seeing green grass, trying to make a few people miss and uh, giving this team a boost. Okay, we're in the 30 again. SNU has had great field position two or three times already in this first half. This is the moment you've got to capitalize. You're down 21-0. to you got to go score right here, right? Like, there's, there's no alternative. It's a touchdown or bust. Far the man in motion. He gets it. Can he make a man miss? Trying to get outside. Horse collar, but he gets inside the 30-yard line. It looked a lot worse than it was as it was Holmes came down hard. Nearly roped him down yeah. to the ground around the neck, but far able to get three yards down to the 28-yard line. Yeah, and those tackles always look pretty bad, but he was in the air. You know, when you're in the air, your body does crazy things, but a good hard run uh, by far. They love him on the edge. They got their speed package in. Expect to see more from him. Second and seven, 10 on the play clock, 5.50 on the second quarter clock for the Crimson Storm in full sunshine right now in Bethany. Ramirez is the back. Robertson, the man in motion to the near side. Porter looking that way, trying to get free. He's got it up the middle. 25, dances to the outside. 20, 15, and he's plowed under by Katron Allen down at the 13-yard line. You know, uh, I know Gage is a quarterback, but he sure takes on contact like he's a linebacker. <laughs> uh, he's he's listed at 225 on the roster, 5'11", and... Um, you know, Gage, Gage has never really had much of a neck, but when I saw him immediately, I was like, wow, he he has no neck now, yeah. just with how he's bulked up. Swings this screen pass out to far on the right side. Cuts inside, five-yard line. Touch! Oh, they mark him down at the one-yard line. Down at the one goes Jarrell Farr. They're going quick here, trying to get substitutions. No, nope, they're keeping the same crew on the field. Going quick, the trying to land their point team was coming on. But it's first and goal at the one-yard line for SNU. 
Porter under center. Ramirez trying to help his quarterback across. Is he in? He is! Touchdown, Crimson Storm! And SNU takes advantage of the huge return by Donald May and puts up the first points of 2022. Okay, they got 11 out there for the PAT, just making sure there's no wasted timeouts here. Big drive there by SNU when they absolutely had That's to have it. Robertson will hold for Ryan Reed right in the middle of the field. Snap, hold, kick on the way, and it is good. So with 4.48 to go in the first half, SNU on the board, 21-7. Our new score in Bethany. And Landry, uh, big drive, some yeah. strong runs there by Gage Porter. They went with the tempo really yes. quick after yes. that to swing that bubble out to Jarrell Farr, and that got him down to the one-yard line. You know, that's, that's historically what you can do as an offense if you are – uh, if you are getting chunk plays, you dictate the pace of the game. And that's what they did. They got a first down. They did a quick screen. Uh, they get another first down. You're in control. The defense is gassed. The defense is trying to get signals in. As an offense, you have the advantage because you know on first and goal or first and 10 at the 13, what five plays you might run. The defense is trying to get it together right then and there. They're out of breath. You, you have all the advantage in the world. And they score a much, much needed touchdown. Reed on to send this one away. Dorian Manuel and LaCedric Smith back deep for Arkansas Monticello. Reed, high end over end kick. It's going to be Manuel at the 11. Up the middle he comes, breaks through a little bit, and he's taken down at the 29-yard line. Nick Blanchard in there along with Carlos Cepeda. So the Weevils will put it in play, first and 10 at their own 29-yard line, 4.39 to go in the first half. Both teams, or SNU with all three timeouts, the Weevils with two. So the SNU defense, a big opportunity yeah. here to get a stop. Give the ball back to your offense and try to capitalize on the momentum. Some personnel issues here for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, having to burn going to have to burn a timeout here. Didn't look like they had the right personnel on really at any point. After that, I don't know if they were trying to have more, more secondary coverage in there or are trying to load up the box anyway was just a little off from the start. Do a quick check on scores around the conference. 13-23 to go in the second quarter. Oklahoma Baptist leads Washita Baptist 9 to 7. Washita just 1 of 10 through the air thus far. Southeastern leads Arkansas Tech 13 to 10, 3 minutes to go in the opening half. Just into the second quarter down in Ada. Harding leads East Central 7 to nothing. And just getting underway out in Arkadelphia, scoreless between Southwestern and Henderson State. Scoreless also out in Magnolia between Northwestern and Southern Arkansas. Two wide receivers either side for the Weevils with the ball in the middle of the field. 4.38 to go first half. 21-7. Arkansas Monticello with the lead. Demylon Brown the quarterback, Gennaro Scott, is the running back. The give is to Scott. Breaks through a tackle. And he's put down by David Omasigo at the 36-yard line. But a yeah. big gain of six yard, or excuse me, of seven yards will be second and three. And it looks like SNU, when they're not in five wide, they're kind of auto stunting to prevent the quarterback read uh, from the outside linebacker. 
Brown. Fakes to no one there. Running back went to the wrong side. Instead, he dumps it out to a wide open Caleb Jacobs. Cross midfield, 45, 40, 35. Tight ropes down the sideline for stepping out of bounds. There is a flag back at the 39-yard line. Yeah, and we got some SNU coaches telling everyone to come back. The lines haven't moved. Looks like it is coming back. We've got an ineligible man downfield, which would probably explain yeah. why Jacobs was so <laughs> wide open here on the near sideline. Yeah, you had, you had both inside and outside linebackers flying to the quarterback on that play, probably thinking that guy's ineligible. So, you uh, turns out if they're covered up, you don't have to, to guard them downfield. So. so, instead of first and 10 inside the SNU 40, it's second and 8 back at the 31-yard line. Clock moving, 3.54 to play, first half, 21-7 Weevils. Two wide to either side, ball at the right hash for Monticello. Brown has the snap, fakes the give, quick slant to Jacobs, and Eli Calhoun with a nice breakup coming through the back. Yeah, and that, was, Jacobs. that was about as close as he could get before it's a penalty. Uh, you know, maybe on a different day that is a penalty, but, uh, I mean, that's... You, you live with that penalty. You just got a guy making a play on the ball. Uh, also, they, they tighten up the wide receivers into the boundary to throw that quick out, to maybe try to create some space or get a quick block. Kind of a downfield screen almost. Third and eight here for Monticello. Two wide either side and a full start on the right tackle. That's going to be Kendall Walker, the redshirt freshman from Cut Off, Louisiana. That's two words, Cut Off. Got a couple, got a couple good uh, hometowns here for the Weevils. You have Cut Off, Louisiana. You Spelled like Ian, it sounds. Ian Meesh, who's from Church Point, Louisiana. <laughs> then, of course, uh, the always classic Damaris White, who is from Smackover, Arkansas. <laughs> so, again, it could have been first and ten inside the 35 of SNU. Instead... It's third and 13 from the Weevils, 26. Brown, back to pass, looking left, now looking right. Pressured from behind, flushed, fires to the sideline, intercepted! The officials are going to huddle. No, it, looks, it looks like he was there. First and down. it's an interception. Josh Johnson with the diving, sliding grab along the sideline. And now a flag comes in from the side judge. You got players all the way down the field. <laughs> Looks like probably going to be a sideline warning. Surely it would be a warning in this situation and not anything uh, more egregious. egregious. Dustin Hayda is in the offensive huddle here, and he's going to be unaware. Oh, my. So an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty going to be assessed on the SNU bench. And that's going to mark it up 15 yards from the 31. So that'll back it all the way up to the 46-yard line. Yeah, and Coach Hayda not not happy at all about that. Uh, so that I mean, in my opinion, Luke, that's just a sideline warning. Yeah, I, you got I guys excited the about the about the, the interception. This you, this happened more than once last year as well. I'm not sure where the war when the warning went away. And we got another stoppage. Got to swap balls here. <laughs> But either way, it's not as advantageous of field position, but it is the second turnover forced for yep. SNU today, which we heard Coach Hayda talk about that, that emphasis, and you're still starting in plus territory. Right. 46-yard line, left hash. Porter is the quarterback. He turns, fakes to Zapata, back to pass. Got time, now he's running. Forces it down the field for Robertson. He's open at the 22 and slung out of bounds by Allen. That's got to be a late flag. How is that not a late flag? He was two <laughs> steps out of bounds. There There's is. the flag. Yeah. And if that's on number one, that's his second. He's done. Number one is Jonathan Scott, and he got one earlier in the game, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I couldn't tell who that first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty back in the first quarter was. But you're right. It would be his second if that first one was on him.
And they are going to give it to Allen, number 23. Gotcha. But that will be half the distance to the goal on the reception by Asa Robertson. And again, Gage Porter's escapability, ability yep. to extend plays, just floated that out there. And Robertson came all the way across from the far side of the field to make that reception at the 22-yard line. Okay, no, no wasted possession here. you got to punch it in. Three minutes left in this quarter. You're going to take your time, but you got to score again here. First and goal, and now a false start coming up on SNU. So that's going to push it back five yards. It'll be first and goal from the 15. It looked like maybe a couple offensive linemen wiggled on that one. Two wide to the left. Robertson out far to the right. Zapata is the back. Ball on the left hash. Far as the man in motion. Porter fakes it to him. Follows Zapata right up the middle. Cuts it. Dives across the 10. Lost the football. I think Still he got it back. Still a wrestling match for it. Oh. Now another flag comes in. As Jaron Alvarado and Allen got tangled up. We don't know who has the ball. Looks, looks like Porter has it. Uh, I don't know. I don't see any way around that. Yeah, he's got it in his arms. Still being wrestled out of his arms, maybe. So the ball's down at he's the five-yard line. This is where Porter recovered it. We'll see what the penalty is. It was Alvarado and Allen who got tangled up. And, the, and you know, that was a really quick flag. It was a very quick flag. I think the official was just trying to get some things under control. Yeah. You know, and, and it could be, I, I couldn't quite see what happened. If it's on Alvarado, that's frustrating for the storm. If it's if it's on Monticello, he's, I mean, he's done. That would be two back-to-back -back in this drive. So the officials huddle at the five. It'll be second and goal from there. We'll see. And maybe it's offsetting. You know, maybe that's what they do. They haven't moved the football, and it doesn't, doesn't look like they're intending to move it. The key here for SNU would be if it is after the play penalty is offsetting, then it would stay at mm -hmm. the five. All right, so it's offsetting personal fouls. It should be second down and, uh, at the five-yard line. So it is on 23, Allen. But because it's a personal foul and not unsportsmanlike, he remains in the game. Correct? Correct. So just a standard. Which? So it's second down and goal for SNU at the five-yard line. 2.51 to go before halftime. 21-7. The Weevils in the lead, but SNU knocking on the door. Two wide right, one left. Alvarado the tight end on the left side. Robertson the man in motion to the far side. Porter fakes the give. Picks his way up the middle. And he's going to be taken down by a host of Weevils at the four. It'll be third down and goal. You have plenty of time on the clock. You pro I mean, it's a pretty chip shot field goal. You take the field goal here. So you're not going to do anything crazy that's going to get a turnover. But you're, you're reaching and thinking, what is the best play that we have in our playbook that we feel comfortable with? You know, if, if I'm Coach Hayden, I'm thinking about maybe a screen or a play action, something that has little consequences if it fails. Farr starts in the backfield beside Porter to his left. Now he goes in motion to the right. Porter looks that way, looking for the quick slant to Zapata, and it falls incomplete off his hands. Just looking for that little yeah. Texas route right into That's the right. middle of the the middle of the field, and Asa Robertson's got a little blood on his arm, so he will check out. Brandon Perez checks in. Fourth and goal from the four, and SNU leaving the offense out there. Yeah, and maybe. Well, I guess the clock's not running. I don't. I don't know if they're just gonna line up and see what they have. They have. Two timeouts, you probably think. Not afraid to use them here if you need to. And this is a disadvantageous field position for Monticello, right. you could hope for. So, SNU going for it. Fourth and goal. Oh, and a no. false start on Zapata. 
who ran out of the backfield a yeah, second he, early, and they're going to call that an illegal shift. And now they will send they kick Ryan Reed out <laughs> for the field goal. Yeah. And it's frustrating. I don't, you know, I don't know if that play call is going to get you that the touchdown. But those are those just little little things, you know. Those are reps you do in practice every day. You got to have those cleaned up. Robertson will spot it at the 16-yard line. Just inside the left tash. Snap, hold, kick on the way. And good from Ryan Reed from 26 yards out. So SNU cashes in again on the turnover. And with 148 to go before halftime, Arkansas Monticello's lead is trimmed to 11 at 21 to 10. Landry SNU battling back here. Monticello will start the second half with the football. But with two timeouts either way, anything could really happen here with 148 to go in the second quarter. A lot of time left, and depending on how this first down play in particular goes, we'll see how each team decides to play it. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the, it, it's different if it's three minutes or something like that, but minute 48, both coaches are probably thinking, let's just get to the locker room. But if you're the if you're SNU's defense, you gotta be you've gotta you gotta realize that they have two timeouts. They have enough time to to make something happen, and you're thinking no big plays here. I mean, you're always thinking no big plays. That's obvious, but but you're not gonna risk giving up a big play. Ryan Reed on to send it away to Dorian Manuel and Lecedric Smith. High end over end kick. It's going to go through Manuel's hands into the end zone. And he's going to bring it out. He's inside the five. And he'll be taken down at the six. I, I, I think, think Manuel had it. to have touched yeah. it when it went through his hands. And that's why he had to go get it and bring it out. So Monticello with first and ten at their own seven-yard line. So an opportunity here for SNU to... Make a stand deep in yeah. Weevil's territory. And maybe this is now where the timeouts make all the more sense. But all the momentum right now is it is completely swapped into the hands of the Crimson Storm. One wide receiver either side, tight end either side in tight. Scott is the back behind Brown in the middle of the field. Brown. Go route right down the sideline looking for LeCedric Smith in and out of his hands. Incomplete. Good coverage out there by Cam Wells. Great throw yeah. from Brown. And Smith just unable to come up with it. That's yeah. one of those football plays where everything was great and nothing happened. Yeah, and Cam, I mean, defensively too, Cam Wells is in good position. If he's a little taller, maybe he gets a hand on that ball. Uh, but, yeah, good throw right on the money. Just couldn't bring it in. So second and ten, and SNU doesn't have to burn a timeout. Scott on the stretch play, taken down at the one-yard line. Malik Ritchie shot through from his defensive end position, and Scott lucky he was on the other side of the goal plane there. Yeah, I mean, it very nearly was a safety. I mean, they've put the ball on the one-yard line hash, but that's a pretty generous spot to where he actually landed with the football. 1-10 to go in the half. SNU didn't take a timeout there. Third and 17. Brown, five yards deep in his end zone. Checks to the sideline. Hud Jackson watching the play clock over there. He might just take this all the way down and call a timeout, which is what he's going to do. So 47 seconds to go in the opening half. Man, all of a sudden, if you, I mean, let's say, you know, like what the Monticello is going to just try to get some chunk yards here, right? Like that's going to try to get the time off the clock, get out of their own end zone. But there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially, you know, modern football is playing the shotgun. You have one drop snap. You have one kind of mess up in the backfield. Or you start a penalty in the end zone. Right. Which would be an automatic safety, which if Monticello is going to try to take a shot, down the field that 
comes very much into play in this situation. Yeah, yeah. How's, For sure. How's this on the stat sheet right now? Monticello, 36 plays, 262 yards. SNU, 24 plays, 102 yards of offense. But SNU with the slight edge in time of possession at, to this point, 14-15 to 14-03. Yeah. And, and I just think goes to show you big plays yes. are literally big. <laughs> And if you if you have if you started watching this game with eight minutes left to go in the second quarter, and you had no idea what the score is, right? Like you think SNU is just on top, cruising, like controlling the game. Uh, but in reality, you know, first it's tail of two quarters right now. Three backs in the backfield. Now they shift. Brown under center. He can give it to his running back in the backfield. Taken down for the safety. Marcus Sowell was back there, and he got Gary Furman on the ground. And the SNU defense with a tremendous sequence there. Put two points on the board for the Storm with 42 seconds to play in the half. I mean, Luke McConnell. Did they even get hands on the defensive tackle? No, oh, that was just, <laughs> that play gracious. was blown up from the beginning. And that's well, when Brown came up under center. I thought he maybe he's just going to lean forward. Yeah. Just and get some space. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't blame him. The I don't know that I mind the play call, but this is what I'm talking about. When you start having the momentum and when you have energy and you start believing in the guy next to you, all of a sudden you're going to start making plays. And this is what's happening, right? Like, so you're down 21 to zero and then all of a sudden you look at the scoreboard and it's a nine point game. It's like a really, really winnable game. Uh, and a game that you now feel in control of. Maybe you can even make it closer before halftime. Unfortunately, halftime might be the best thing for Monticello <laughs> yeah, right now. That's right. So McKnight will kick off from the 20. Josh Johnson and Donald May at the SNU 20 awaiting the kick. McKnight sends the end over end kick to Johnson at the 29. Johnson. Picking his way across the 45, breaks a tackle. Could not escape the last man. That was number 35, Bryson LeBlanc. And Johnson goes down at the 45. That looks like he might be dealing with a cramp. Also lost a shoe, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's dealing got a cramp. with a cramp right there. Yeah, you know, and it's not super hot outside, but it has been raining all day. So that humidity, even though the temperature is not that bad, you, your body loses enough sweat, you're going to start cramping up quickly. Yeah, every, the range of temperatures that everybody on the field has gone through, everybody <laughs> warmed up, they warmed up in the pouring rain, yep. the game started in a steady shower, and now it's, you know, gorgeous evening, yeah. great sunset, you know, you've got some clouds behind us that blocking the last of the sun for the evening but just a perfect temperature yeah. great night for football and here's SNU first and 10 middle of the field at their own 45 45 yard line 34 seconds two timeouts three wide to the left one to the right for Gage Porter he's back to pass looking rolls out to the left looking for help fires it over the middle looking for Robertson but Robertson couldn't get back to the ball in time eight seconds off the clock be second and ten. You know, I think, I think Gage could have stepped up into that pocket a little bit. You know, I, and uh, he loves to be on the run. They designed plays for him to be on the run. I, I understand that. But in two minute offense, you gotta, you gotta trust that pocket a little bit. It's kind of breaking down around you, and he has the speed. But when you step into the pocket, you can really fire off your back foot, and you can see the field better. It's a little more nerve wracking sometimes, but, but he boots into more. Uh, more pressure. Five on the play clock for SNU. Two wide to either side. Porter takes the snap. Straight drop. Looking. Looking. Now he's in trouble. Evades the pressure. Fires it looking for Alvarado down the sideline. He high points it at the 35-yard line of Arkansas Monticello. SNU will go quickly to the line of scrimmage. Try to maybe stop the clock. SNU is going to try to just kill it real quick. They will with 13 seconds. Actually, SNU is going to burn a timeout. So 
Six one way, half dozen the other. Saves the down. Yes. So SNU first and ten at the Monticello 35-yard line. 13.8 seconds on the clock here in Bethany. And SNU moving within striking distance. Got a, just a slight breeze yeah. from the south would help any field goal attempt by Ryan Reed, but SNU certainly looking to try to punch it in the end zone first and foremost, and then worrying about a kick distance after the fact. But a nice throw there by Porter, finding Alvarado, who had gotten behind Jonathan Scott. Just a perfect place, yeah. a perfect high point yeah. there by Alvarado. And that's why you love Alvarado, right? Like, he's a tall guy, big guy, who can go make plays like that for you. And y you can tell that Porter and Alvarado... Uh, have, have a good connection and uh, they seem to always know where each other uh, or what the, each other is thinking on the field so SNU breaks the huddle one timeout remaining either way 21 to 12 the Weevils with the lead Arkansas Monticello jumped out 21 nothing it's been all SNU since here that's about the middle of the second quarter yeah, and, and you're probably looking at at least 10 yards to, to have a comfortable field goal here. I think they are wanting to bump the clock time up. Fifteen seconds. A couple seconds can get added here for us and you. only help the cause three wide receivers left the tight end Alvarado on the right side of the line for SNU Ramirez is the back with Porter Porter rolls left fires it toward the side he's got Robertson he gets out of bounds inside the 20 yard line another really nice throw from Gage yeah. Porter so you're going to spot that right at the 20 so a 15 yard pickup you have five seconds off the clock there you got one play to, to make something happen, right? Like, you're in field goal range. You, you're not trying to take a sack. You have a timeout. What's your bread and butter play in for, for a 20-yard gain, right, to give you a shot at the end zone? You're okay if if you catch it and you have to run a little bit. Average play is about seven seconds, give or take. So you don't have to aim for the, the sideline either. So if you want to hit your tight end on a seam or a dump route, it's there. Ball on the left hash, 10 seconds. Two wide either side. Porter back to pass. Quarterback draw. Finds a wide open. Ramirez at the middle. He threw it right before the line of scrimmage. What a play by Porter. Touchdown, Crimson Storm. That was close, Slangery. <laughs> That's one of those where you're glad that it has to be the entire ball, the entire body across yes. the line of scrimmage. Absolutely. And good job on the lineman for not going downfield as well, because that was obviously <laughs> a passing play. Yes. But what a play by Porter to see Ramirez just wide open behind the yeah. defense. Reed on for the extra point. Puts it up. And through with six seconds to go. We got ourselves a ball game in Bethany. SNU has rattled off 19 straight. And it's 21 to 19. 19 straight in about six minutes of game time, Luke. And uh, you know what's even more incredible on that last play? I, I don't I don't know where the, the defensive breakdown was. It didn't look like it was a crossing route. It didn't look like a wheel. It just looked like a straight up seam. And, yeah, and he just took it up the seam. There was nothing there. I don't, yeah, man, I would love to watch a replay of that. Yeah, the Maybe next year we can get replay on there yeah. on a video. <laughs> The safeties both went to the outside, covering the two wide to either side. And I think that was probably as key as anything. None of the yeah. wide receiver routes went anywhere near the middle of the field. Right. So everybody just yeah, forced the safeties to, the side. to go to the side. Yep. But what a heads-up play by Porter, who very easily could have taken off, probably picked up yeah. 10, 15 yards yeah. right up the middle because the middle was still just as open oh, for yeah. him Green to grass, run the ball. Yeah. Yeah, when they watch film, uh, I don't think he knew how close he was to the line of scrimmage. 
<laughs> Reed threw that football. Six seconds to play. Ryan Reed will send it deep. And he'll squib it, actually. And Monticello will fall on it at the 27-yard line. Big collisions there from Damaris White and a couple SNU players. Yep. So Got the Weavers will come out. out. <laughs> so the Weavers will come out. First and ten at the 26. I imagine they'll just kneel on this one and head to the locker room. Again, the uh, the halftime break, the biggest friend for Monticello right now. Yeah. Brown takes the snap, goes to a knee, and we will head to the locker room. A tale of two quarters Man. in Bethany to start the 2022 season. Monticello jumped up 21-0, but our halftime score, Arkansas Monticello 21, Southern Nazarene 19. We'll take a bit of an extended break here. We'll come back, first half stats, scores from around the conference, and we will take a look ahead to the second half of action. Again, here in Bethany, 21-19, Arkansas Monticello leads Southern Nazarene. We'll be back after this break. This is SNU Football.
when you are. And hey, welcome back to Bethany. Arkansas Monticello leads Southern Nazarene 21 to 19 at halftime. Luke McConnell, Landry Franks with you after a wildly entertaining first half that saw the Weevils just dominate the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game, take a 21 nothing lead, and then SNU totally turned the tide in that second quarter, rattling off 19 consecutive points. The first touchdown of the game for SNU came with 4.48 to play in the first half after a long kickoff return by Donald May. SNU cashed in with a 31-yard touchdown drive. After an interception, they were able to get a 26-yard Ryan Reed field goal, then a safety with 41 seconds left, and then finally with five seconds left, Gage Porter found Angel Ramirez for a 20-yard touchdown pass over the middle to cap a 55-yard five-play touchdown drive. And that gives us our score, 21-19. to And Landry, that the first 20, 25 minutes were, were rough, <laughs> uh, to say the least. And you know, we heard Coach Hayda talk about just t giving the players that confidence yeah. and telling them to have that confidence to be able to make those plays. And, you know, that wasn't happening at the beginning, but as soon as that first big play happened with Donald May on the kickoff return, yeah, um, and SNU was able to cash in, it was a big snowball rolling quickly downhill. Well, you know, even before that, they had a few big plays, but it seemed it seemed uh, just, I hate to say this, but typical of SNU to kind of shoot themselves in the foot with penalty or something to move themselves backwards out of this good, advantageous position. <clears throat> but what they did... Uh, well, uh, in particular, you're right, Luke, right after that kickoff return, man, three plays and a touchdown. That gets some momentum going, and all of a sudden, you put them in bad field position two times, and you capitalize on those both times, uh, and, and uh, all of a sudden, this is a, a really, really good game. Now, Luke, I will say this, and maybe this is just the coach coming out in me. But in the, in the locker room at halftime, you've got to be preaching, finish the job, right? Like, it is not over. Even though you feel like you're on top of the world right now, you're still down by two points. you got to score another touchdown. You've got to take the lead. And that's something that SNU has not done very often. And it's an inexperienced team in those ways of winning, right? Like, which sounds, sounds kind of ridiculous, but you have to learn to win. And this is that moment where you just got to, where you just got to go out there and, Control the game like you have been, put points on the board, and then maintain that momentum all the way through the fourth quarter. Let's look at a couple of those keys that Coach Ada mentioned. Uh, you know, the start fast, obviously, that, that did not happen <laughs> in, in this one. Uh, <laughs> turnover battle. SNU, two interceptions, no turnovers for the Crimson Storm in the first half, plus yeah. two in turnover margin. Good stuff there. Penalties, 7 for 45. That's that's certainly too many, mm -hmm. uh, both in number and in the variety. Uh, 5 for 39 for Arkansas Monticello. So it's a kind of a wash situationally. SNU bur was burned by a couple of those, especially after mm -hmm. that first interception. Right. Uh, had the 15-yarder that kind of pushed him out uh, along with the sack. Just pushed him out of range there. And then... Third down conversions, both teams, not good. One for six for Monticello, 0 for six for SNU. SNU's done a nice job, time of possession, pretty much even, uh, despite SNU being outgained in total yards by uh, a little over 100 yards and nine more plays for Monticello. Um, just running through first half stats overall, Monticello, 12 first downs, SNU with eight. Monticello, 24 carries, 162 yards on the ground. SNU, 16 carries, 61 yards. 99 yards through the air for Monticello on 6 of 14 passing. 96 through the air for SNU on 5 of 13 passing. 38 plays, 261 yards for Monticello, good for 6.9 yards per play. SNU, very respectable, 29 plays, 157 yards, 5.4 yards per play in the first half. Individually, uh, Jarvis Davis. Four carries, 21 yards. Gage Porter, seven carries, 20 yards. Carlos Cepeda, three carries for 12 yards. One for five for Angel Ramirez, and one for three for Jarrell Farr. For Gennaro Scott, 14 carries, 93 yards, and a touchdown of the 54-yard variety. 
five carries, 60 yards for Demylon Brown, three carries, six yards for Edward Kleinpeter, and one carry for three yards for Caleb Jacobs. Receiving-wise, Asa Robertson, two catches, 44 yards, one for 20 and a touchdown for Angel Ramirez, one for 20 for Jaron Alvarado, and one for 12 for Jarrell Farr. Isaiah Cross, two for 68, two for 13 for Jordan Mansfield for Monticello. Caleb Jacobs had one for 13, and Ben Colligan, one for five for Arkansas Monticello. A quick check on scores from around the conference. Second half action down in Durant. A doozy of a game here with Arkansas Tech leading Southeastern 24 to 20. Southeastern uh, was Fennett was predicted third in the preseason rankings. And Arkansas Tech just scored on a 70-yard touchdown pass to go up 31-20 to down in Durant. So keep your eyes on that one. Kyle Ship's bunch against the Savage Storm. Southern Arkansas leads Northwestern late first half 14-9. 14-9 is also the score at halftime down in Ada. Harding leading East Central. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a time when this happened. Harding, more passing yards than rushing yards at the half. 88 to 84. Both touchdowns for Harding also coming through the air. As <laughs> st new starting quarterback Cole Keelan, 2 for 4, 88 yards, 2 scores for the Bisons. He's, uh, I would be very interested to know when the last time that happened for Harding was at any <laughs> point in in a game that was at any significant point in a game like halftime or end of game. Certainly end of game that has not happened in a very long time. Yes. I just picture their quarterback asking their coach after each pass play, are you sure you want me to pass it on this one? That shouldn't I be handing yeah. it off? Or he comes over is Can we throw some more? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> halftime over in Shawnee Oak oh, Oklahoma Baptist trailing Washita Baptist 14 to 12. Mm. Quarterback Riley Harms for Washita Baptist, two of 14, Oof. and an interception. And over in Arkadelphia, Henderson State leads Southwestern nine to seven. A little way into the second quarter. So we are ready to get back to action here, Landry. What do you want to see from SNU in the second half? Keep that momentum going. You start uh, on defense. Get your offense the ball back quickly. That's what I want to see. You do that, I feel confident that SNU can, can take this uh, to the end and get a, a victory. What about you, Luke? Yeah, I think continue what you saw with Gage Porter. Things were starting to click offensively. There was a good rhythm offensively for SNU, a good mix and match on the on the passing. Um, you know, SNU's pretty judicious when they use tempo, but the hurry up near the end of the first half seemed to really do good for the offense there. Ryan Reed to send this one away, right to left. Here in the third quarter. 21-19, Arkansas Monticello with the lead, and we're underway in quarter number three. Big boot from the big senior goes through the end zone, and the Weevils will start at their own 25-yard line. And there's some hitting going on out there on kickoffs. It has been all night long. Yep. And, and lots of John back and forth. That's just part of football, you know. As long as it's uh, it's appropriate, you know, just makes uh, makes the game a little more fun. These teams have gone nine months without hitting another That's team. Right. That's They're right. They're taking advantage of it here tonight. So the Weevils will start on the far hash, first and ten, moving left to right from their own 25-yard line. Scott, the running back, the man in motion. He gets it on the give, cuts it upfield outside the... Hash taken down after a gain of five by Trent Smith and Dylan Bauer in on the play. Second down and five upcoming. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure every time Scott is lined up outside as a receiver, it's been a jet sweep to him. So uh, that is uh, something that's being predictable. You, you got to key in on that as an SNU defense. They might run uh, something trick out of there. Brown gives it to Scott, running right again. This time he's tracked down from the backside by defensive end Malik Ritchie. Barely got one. It'll be third and four. Bauer looks to be down here. 
And I think he's cramping now as well. Had a couple SNU defenders with cramps <laughs> in this one. Yeah. Kind of a free timeout here as well for both teams. Athletic training staff does a great job. Uh, I'd be glad to donate some pickle juice to the cause next week if I need to. Good to see Dylan Bauer had kept the stash that he had, was sporting prominently <laughs> at, at media day. Quite prominent there on his upper lip. as He fires up the crowd as he comes off. Two wide either side, third and four for the SNU defense. Minute gone by in third quarter. Brown's back to pass. He's got time. Airs it down the sideline. He's got cross open, and he's got it. Yeah, and just a double move there. It's a post corner, and uh, the I, I'm not sure who's in coverage there, but when that post broke in, uh, it, it was wide open when he opened it back to the corner. So got to be got to have good eye discipline on those plays to – to stick with those double moves. Big pickup on the play down to the SNU 40 yard line. Looked like Emmanuel Urbina was the man in coverage, the redshirt freshman linebacker. Excuse me, Jamari Johnson. Brown's back to pass, looking on the outside. He's got Mansfield again along the sideline. Steps out of bounds at the SNU 32 yard line for a pickup of eight. You know, they keep running those quick out routes. And it's forcing the safety to come down to try to make a play on that ball. And it's just taking so long for Calhoun to get there because he's lined up uh, so far in the secondary. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to cheat him down a little bit uh, to, to help with some of those quick outs. Monticello keeps the same formation, two wide either side. Ball on the left hash, 13 minutes to go third quarter. Brown swings it out to Scott. The pass is low. At his feet, it falls incomplete. The pressure there from David Omasigo, the outside linebacker. So yeah, third and two. This third down, or this four down territory right here is probably too long to kick a field goal. Yeah, just too a short to punt. Yeah, just a smidge of wind from the south blowing in Monticello's mm -hmm. face. Scott lined out to the left side, too wide to the right, here tight end either side. Quarterback draw all the way. Brown behind his offensive line. Squirts free across the 25. Across the 20. He breaks free to the 10. To the 5. Touchdown. Demilon Brown, his second of the evening. Yeah, that's two times on third and short that they've run a quarterback draw. And they just haven't been able to bring him down. Uh, he, he, is a, he is a tough runner for a quarterback. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but Brown is, is not untackleable. And, uh, and I don't know if it's if it's just trying to read too long or what it is, but those quarterback draws has given have given SNU fits all night. So Brown takes it in from 32 yards at a 25-yard run in the first half, and McKnight on for the extra point. Kick is on the way, low liner, but it is good. Yeah. Not the prettiest kick. Not at all. So with 12.47 to go in the third quarter, Arkansas Monticello regains momentum a bit with a touchdown drive of 75 yards, and they take a 28-19 lead here in the third quarter. We'll take a break and be right back after this. This is SNU Football. Arkansas Monticello leads this one 28 to 19 over Southern Nazarene. 12:47 to go, third quarter. Luke McConnell and Landry Franks with you here in the season opener for both squads in Bethany. 
Arkansas Monticello up to 200 yards rushing with that 32-yard touchdown run from Demylon Brown, which was actually his third of the evening. The Weevils averaging 7.4 yards per carry this evening, 7.6 yards per play after that 75-yard touchdown drive. It'll be Donald May and Josh Johnson back deep to return for SNU. Marquise McKnight, transfer from Grambling University, will send this one away for the Weevils. Run up and the boot. It's going to be Donald May from the nine. Heading left behind his blockers. Cuts it back across the 30, 35, 40, decked at the 40-yard line. That was Jonathan Scott, and a flag comes in. We might have targeting here from May on Scott, the Monticello defender. That's the only logical thing. Yeah. Because that flag came too fast for an after-the-play situation. Right. So the only thing I could think of is that far side official saw targeting on Jonathan Scott. So let's see if that is, in fact, the call. So there's no flag yeah. on the play. Officials That's talk about it, and... No penalty for targeting. So, either way, good field position for SNU right. here at the 42-yard line. Certainly advocating for safety, but I always like when a player is not removed from the game uh, for just a bang-bang play like that. Ball on the left hash for SNU. Two wide receivers to the right. Asa Robertson goes in motion to the top of the formation. The give is to Angel Ramirez up the middle. And he's going to be taken down after a gain of one by Chris Blair, the defensive end. It'll be second and nine. You have three options there for uh, Gage Porter to read. The jet sweep coming across, the halfback dive or uh, power which he had, or the quarterback pull. And I don't know um, kind of what he was seeing. It looked kind of crowded to me, but his vantage point is obviously much better than mine. So Andrew Ramirez sporting the, those Air Jordan cleats. Good look there. Robertson again in motion to the top of the formation. Porter looks for the quick hitch. Now he's got space. Across the 50, 45, 40. Cuts it back inside to the 35-yard line. Before he's taken down. Tanner Coerson in on the tackle. Marshall Lloyd laid a hit on him as well. Andy Cardenas lost his helmet in the process, so he'll have to come off for a play. But a big gain on second down for Gage Porter, and Andrew looked like he had space to just keep running outside. Yeah. Not sure why he cut that back inside. He loves the contact. He does love the contact. <laughs> he hadn't had contact in oh, a long time. Yes, that's so. right. Almost a year ago to the day. Asa Robertson came off after that play as well. First down, Porter right up the middle. Is following his blockers. He's got a good five yards. On first down, down to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and five yards to go. Yeah, and this is what you want to see, right? Like, good chunk yardage, under control as an offense. You just got scored on. You're not immediately punting, right? Even if you don't score a touchdown here, you've put Monticello in a dis a disadvantageous, I'm uh, saying the wrong word there, Luke, but in a, a position where they aren't, uh, going to succeed as well as if you were to just punt on a three and out. Three wide to the right. Porter back to pass. Quick screen over to Alvarado. He's got it across the middle. 25 inside to the 23 where he's knocked down hard by Damaris White. Big contact there. Down to the 23 yard line and a first down for SNU. Clock moving 10.30 to go third quarter. Luke, that's just a, a simple tight and shallow route. Right? Like, there's no crossing route. It's just tight and shallow all the way. Uh, and you read that linebacker. If the linebacker comes down, you don't throw the tight end shallow. You go to the second level. But if no one comes down, you just throw that. But I will say this. It's one of the hardest routes to throw because it's so short, and it's right over your lineman, and he's running full speed. So it seems like a simple throw, more complicated than it looks. Ball in the middle of the field. Perez to the top of the formation. Porter fakes the give to him. Spins away from the defender. He's free. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! What a move by Gage Porter! He 
he lifts a defender, grasping at air in the backfield, and he takes it over the touchdown. A flag comes in late. Yeah, and, and unsportsmanlike conduct probably on, on someone. I, I think Man, it's going to be on Gage. He was tapping his chest as he was coming toward the sideline. So we'll see where they assess this. I would yeah, imagine we'll okay. assess this on the kickoff. And he uh, he put that defensive end in the spin cycle, Luke. I mean, <laughs> I don't know where he was going. So, yeah, I do believe that that is on Gage Porter. But what a run. Oh, 23 man. yards to pay dirt. And, Landry, we've got ourselves an old-fashioned uh, uh, shootout <laughs> at the OK Corral. That's right. You don't get to say that in an SNU football game very often. No, not at all. Reed on for the extra point. And he'll send that up and through. 9.56 to go, third quarter. Arkansas Monticello leads this one 28-26. We'll take a break and be back. This is SNU football. Season opener for 2022. We've got a high-scoring affair here in Bethany. 28-26, Arkansas Monticello leads Southern Nazarene. Luke McConnell and Landry Franks with you here in Bethany. Delighted to have you with us for the season opener for both schools. And this has turned what looked to be a one-sided affair after the first 20 minutes has turned into just a wild back-and-forth matchup. Lots of feistiness, lots of points, and we've still got 10 minutes to go in the third <laughs> quarter, Landry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the end of the end of the first quarter, 21 to zero, is that right? That's 14-0. Uh, 14-0 after one, and uh, barely into the third quarter, 26-28. Unbelievable. Yeah. The fans that came late after the rain to get their money's worth tonight, that's for sure. Absolutely, because they'll be staying late at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> so after the unsportsmanlike light conduct penalty on SNU, Ryan Reed will be kicking off from his own 20-yard line. He'll send this one deep. It's going to be LaCedric Smith from the 16-yard line. Right up the middle he goes. He's got space and he's got speed. Trying to break it to the outside. It's going to be Aaron Randall who takes him down in SNU territory at the 38-yard line. There is a flag back at the Monticello 26-yard line. Oh, man, if this is on Monticello, this is a backbreaker. <laughs> oh, goodness. Fortuitous, fortuitous, storm, fortuitous for SNU. And it is an oh. illegal block in the back on the Weevils. So instead of the SNU 38-yard line, it will be Monticello's own 18-yard line where the Weevils will put it in play. Man, and that, oh, goodness. In film tomorrow, whoever had that block in the back, I mean, that's they weren't even in the play. No, not at all. Oh, goodness. Drive a coach crazy. Lose sleep over that. Monticello puts it in play on the near hash. Too wide to either side. 9.50 to go third quarter. Gennaro Scott, the running back beside DeMilon Brown. Brown back to pass. Looking left. Flushed. Being chased from behind. And he throws it low through the arms of Mansfield on the far sideline. 
yeah, second looked, down. Looked like there was a hold on the left tackle there for Monticello. No flag. You know, I don't think we've had an offensive holding on a lineman this whole game, which I could appreciate, uh, but it did seem like there's one. Asking you lucky there that the pass is a little underthrown. Brown takes the snap, gives it to Scott, running around the left side, track down from behind. And number 35, Blade Horton, the sophomore from Colgate. Tracking him down and putting him down. No gain. They give him one, actually, up to the 19. It'll be third down and nine. Man, this is a big, big third down. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised to see the five wide again. Wouldn't be surprised to see the quarterback draw in five wide again since they've had so much success with it. Here's five wide, three to the left, two to the right. Brown is back to pass, looking right down the seam. He's got Jacobs, and he hit him in stride into SNU territory at the 45-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 43. Yeah, and it looks Here comes the Weevils quickly to the line of scrimmage. Looks like they were running cover one in the secondary, but you still have man-to-man -man in cover one and with safety over the top help, and both just got beat on the play. Luckily, that ball was underthrown. If not, he's going to score a touchdown. First and 10, Weevils at the SNU 43-yard line, 8.43 to go. Third quarter, Scott cuts it up the middle of the field, still keeping the legs churning, and he's going to be stopped at the 36. So a gain of seven on first down. Make it second and three. Whole host of Crimson Storm defenders in on that stop. Ball on the right hash. Two wide to the right side. Brown turns and hands it to Scott. Running left. Cuts it across the 30-yard line. He's got the first down, down to the 29-yard line. <laughs> and then Cam Wells and Mansfield get tangled up. Mansfield with the shove and a 15-yard penalty coming up on Arkansas Monticello unless they decide to go offsetting here. Yeah, and who knows what that could be. Cam Wells had great uh, posture falling down on that one, I'll say that. We're watching some NBA basketball, looks like. Yeah, both definitely had a hold of each other, and it was Mansfield who initiated the shove. Monticello is moving backwards. And they will assess this against the Weevils, and it will be a dead ball foul. So that will instead make it first and ten at the 44-yard line of SNU since the first down was achieved. So fortuitous for Monticello, it's not a first and 25 right. situation, but still 15 yards back. First and 10, ball on the left hash. Brown keeps it up the middle, squirts through a tackler, but able to be tripped up enough there by Dylan Bauer and Eli Calhoun, Trent Smith came over the top to finish him off. Gain of five on first down. Second and five upcoming. Now Trent Smith grabbing at his foot with a little bit of cramping. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is interesting. The more the, this game goes, the less effective Monticello's halfback run game is. The, the defensive line of SNU, you know, the first three drives, they couldn't get any penetration at all. They couldn't get their hands free from the offensive linemen. And it just seems like Monticello's offensive linemen are just wearing down. And so the running pressure is now being put on their quarterback, Brown. And he's going to have to make some plays for Monticello to be successful. And he has. But if you're a defense, that's something that's good for you, that you have stopped one of the threats, and now you have... Uh, just one to worry about more consistently. Demilon Brown, seven carries, 97 yards. His three touchdowns to his credit, 32, 25, and 11 yards. So he's averaging 14 yards a carry. 
on those seven yards. Monticello as a whole averaging seven yards a carry as well on 220 yards rushing. Smith heads to the sidelines. Looks to be all right. Second and five from the middle of the field for the Weevils. Come out with four wide receivers, two to either side. And Scott remains the back behind Brown, who lines up in the shotgun. Brown takes the snap, fakes the screen to Scott. Now he'll take off up the middle and slides down at the 35-yard line. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, good um, spot by the refs. Just a simple rule check. Uh, it's where you give yourself up on the slide. And so even though he slid, completed his slide well past the 45-yard line, he is down before the 45-yard line, or the 35, excuse me. So third and one, 638 and counting here in the third quarter. Weevils with a two-point lead, 28 to 26 over Southern Nazarene. Tight end to either side, two tight ends right. Brown picks his way across the 30s into the secondary, and he's down inside the 20-yard line to Mylon Brown. Another big chunk run there for the we junior Weevil quarterback. Yeah, and he's just a patient runner. He's finding the holes where they are, and he's taking advantage. Calhoun has to step out, losing his helmet on that play. Trent Smith comes back in. Aaron Randall stays out there. That backup safety spot. And the defense, they just need to find a way to get off the field right here. This has been pushing four minutes on this drive. Started back at their own 18. Scott takes the handoff, running left, puts his foot in the ground, and managed to lean across the 20-yard line down to the 17 for a gain of about four. Or even three, actually. So it'll yeah. be second and seven. Yeah, not much, w not much room to work there. Uh, good stuff by the SNU front line and linebackers. Two wide to the right, one to the left for the Weevils from the middle of the field. 5.30 to go third quarter. Omasigo off the edge, but out to Scott, who's upended by Kim Wells at the 15-yard line. Nice find from Brown, but Cam Wells in a one-on-one, -on -one, had-to-have-it yeah, situation have it. made a huge tackle there. That's right. You send an outside linebacker on a blitz like that, He his, his pickup when he's not blitzing is the running back. They pop the running back out. They see the blitz. It's probably a check uh, from when he reads the blitz, and a great play by Cam Wells. Third down, left hash, 15-yard line. Brown back to pass. Fires it into the flat. Mansfield's got it, and he scampers into the end zone for the Monticello touchdown. Yeah, it looked, looked to me like they were playing just like a some kind of zone coverage, um, probably cover two. But linebackers have to create space on something like that, and there was just a giant pocket right by the pylon where you're expecting your inside linebacker to cover probably just a little bit too much ground. Now Mansfield just sat down about the seven yard line and the veteran Brown just hit him right in the numbers and Mansfield had plenty of space to get in the end zone. McKnight's extra point is blocked and it goes through the end zone out of bounds. So SNU makes a play, another play yeah. I should say, on special teams with 447 to go in the third quarter. Didn't see who got a hand on that. Lady, but that McKnight's yeah. had several low was, kicks. Yeah, it was this really, evening. really low. I mean, if, if someone could get a hand on it, maybe it hits a helmet. Uh, it, it was, I'm not sure how close that would have been to even going over the upright. Uh, but that, I mean, Luke, that's, that's a huge play. It's an eight point football game now, right? Like, that's a touchdown and two point conversion away from a tie. And, uh, and your offense is cooking. Like, you, you've got to feel some confidence in them. And they need to put a long drive together to get their defense some rest, but they need to score. I mean, I mean, a few more minutes, we can be talking about a tie football game, Luke. 4.47 to go, third quarter. A long drive there for the Weevils. <coughs> That one to be exact, 12 plays, 82 yards, 5 minutes 
off the clock. And that's the longest scoring drive of the evening for either squad at this point. So it'll be McKnight kicking off from the 35. Donald May and Josh Johnson back deep to return. Donald May averaging 38 yards of return thus far this evening. See if he can make something happen again. It's going to be Johnson this time from the 10. Up the middle, angling right. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to the outside. He's going to be taken down <laughs> about the 31-yard line. So good field position here for SNU. With 4.40 to go in the third quarter, Gage Porter leading the offense back onto the field. In the last few drives for SNU, 58 yards and a touchdown, 55 yards and a touchdown, 38 yards and a field goal, and 31 yards and a touchdown. So SNU has yeah. scored on four straight possessions. Which wins? When's the last time we've said anything like that? It, it has been a little while, and SNU picked up just one first down on their first five possessions. Porter fakes the give to Fellows. He's got it right up the middle. He'll gain three out to the 35-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Several number changes this season for the SNU offense. But uh, Aaron Fellows going from 81 to 27 as a wide receiver is <laughs> definitely the one that's throwing me the most, without question. Well, maybe he thought he was going to get some reps at running back or something this year. Two wide to the left, one to the right. Ball on the right hash for SNU. Ramirez is the back behind Porter. Dalen Smith goes to the right side of the formation in motion. Porter gives it to Ramirez. Bounces off a tackle across the 40-yard line and a nice strong run yeah. for Angel Ramirez. Six yards up to the 41. It'll be third and one. And and something you don't think about, you know, just watching a game where you just see people, especially at a collegiate level, just hold on to the football. But when you get tackled from behind, even though there's no contact with the football, Having your body pushed forward like that, it's real easy to lose control of the football. Ramirez, man, just such a sure-handed running back. Gets hit in the back really hard on that play, holds on to the football, then even takes the contact on the ground. Ten on the play clock as SNU comes to the line of scrimmage right in the middle of the field. Third and one, 3.17 to go third quarter. Porter fakes the give to Ramirez, bounces it outside across the 45. He's got the first down and a little bit more. Up yeah. to the 46. Nice pickup of five. Yeah, and that was just a a last. That is that, That's why he trusts the veteran quarterback right there. I mean, that pull and that read is slow, 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 slow. And then, boom, he makes the decision, and the whole defense is going the other way. Right? They don't think he has the ball. Uh, and, and that comes with time and with practice and with trusting your running back and trusting your offensive line to make those decisions. Porter said last year being hurt, one of the biggest things he learned was just knowing the offense, knowing the playbook more, and reads were a big part of that. First and 10, SNU. Porter, back to pass. Flushed out to the right, looking for help. Now he's going to run. 50, 45, 40, and out of bounds down the far sideline. Big pickup on first down for Gage Porter, and they're into Arkansas Monticello territory at the Weevil 39-yard line. Yeah, and, you know, Gage, a big guy, big big quarterback, 225. Uh, but uh, he doesn't lack for speed. I mean, he's got a second gear, and when he hits it, he hits it fast. A nice drive being put together here by SNU. First and 10 at the Weevil 39-yard line. Two minutes to go, third quarter. SNU trails by eight. Here comes Robertson in motion to the near side. Ball's on the ground. It's loose. And Monticello, I believe, is on top of that one. And they are. That's the second low snap of the night. And it's the first turnover of the night for the Crimson Storm. And just like that, the promising drive falters. Yeah, and that's really frustrating. I mean, it is. It just, it's just, it's not only low, it's. It's to the side, and they're booting the other way. I mean, this is probably the worst time for a bad snap. Oh, man. Certainly frustrating for the Crimson Storm, who who seem to just be rolling on offense. 
The SNU defense being called upon here to make a play. Five, two wide either side, tight into the right for the Weevils. Brown back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. He's got lots of space. 50, 45, and dives down at the SNU 42-yard line. Yeah, uh, Brown is feeling confident uh, with his legs. And uh, even though that's a passing play, I don't know how long he looked down the field. Once he saw green grass, he just took advantage of it. And, it, it, you know, you have a spy in there. You have a linebacker watching him. But as much as you like your linebackers, they can't keep up. Brown gives it to Scott. Running right. Cut, puts his foot in the ground. Up the middle of the field. Dragging tacklers across the 35. Being pushed inside the 30-yard line. Big number 55 for Arkansas Monticello. With the big push there. Excuse me, that was 56. Ryan Williams. An SNU player down on the field after that run down to the 29-yard line of SNU. One sixteen to go, third quarter. Weevils leading thirty-four to twenty-six. Not sure who the SNU player down on the field is. Do a quick check of scores around the conference. Washtenaw Baptist starting to seize control over in Shawnee. They lead now twenty-eight to twelve. Two twenty to go, third quarter. T.J. Cole picking up where he left off last year. Sixteen carries. 163 yards and two touchdowns as the Tigers up to 292 yards on the ground. That's Dylan Bauer, who is the injured SNU player. Arkansas Tech still leads Southeastern 31-28 early in the fourth quarter. Halftime in Magnolia, Southern Arkansas 21, Northwestern 9. We'll get to the rest in a moment. Two wide either side. Brown sticks in the belly of Dorian Manuel around the left side, and he crosses the 25 down to the 23-yard line for a gain of six on first down. Harding leads East Central 21-9 in the third quarter. All three touchdowns are still passing touchdowns for Harding. <laughs> <laughs> and Henderson State at halftime in a close game, 16-10 over Southwestern. Ball on the left hash for Brown. Looking right, looking up the post for Jacobs. Intercepted by Josh Johnson. Johnson returning down the right side, trying to get outside. Now he's in trouble. He's forced out of bounds at the 20 at SNU. Turnover for turnover as Josh Johnson comes up with his second pick of the night with 29 wow. seconds to go in the third quarter. You know, it, it's a little bit of a cliche to say the, the momentum is swinging like a pendulum, but it really is. I mean, you have a turnover. You have... SNU has all the momentum, charging down the field, fumble, goes back to Monticello. Monticello, I mean, it's a great play by Johnson. Uh, but uh, Brown uh, um, uh, just uh, telegraphed that pass right into, into the secondary. So, man. And Johnson just came and gave the ball to someone in the stands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Josh, this is this is D two football. Monticello will <laughs> yeah. definitely be wanting their football yes, back. That's right. At hundred dollars a pop, they're gonna they're Absolutely. gonna kindly request that football back. But SNU with a huge momentum turning play there after Monticello was looking to seize that back. Ball on the left hash. Twenty nine seconds to go. Third quarter. Here's Porter running to the left, looking for the pitch, and it's loose in the backfield. It finally goes out of bounds. That was a exceptionally dangerous yeah. late pitch through traffic. It and goes down as a fumble technically and back at the 16-yard line, so a loss to five on first down. And that'll end the, the first quarter, but it looked like there was just a speed option, but their depths never just looked right. They were kind of running parallel the whole time. It's not going to be good for a pitch. So that is the end of the third quarter. Arkansas Monticello leads a wild one here in Bethany, 34 to 26 
the final stanza coming up after this break. We'll be back after these messages. Fourth quarter time here in Bethany, the Crimson Storm looking for a season opening win. They'll have to do it in comeback fashion as they trail Arkansas Monticello 34 to 26 heading to the final stands of it. Crowd is certainly into it here, Landry. It's a great atmosphere here yeah. on the season opening night. Yeah, it certainly is. And, I, you know, I <laughs> when we were starting the kickoff, I think there were about eight people in the stands and it was heavy rain. So... To see this stadium really fill out and uh, and have the support uh, that that this football team deserves tonight for sure. It'll be second and fifteen though for SNU at their own sixteen yard line, coming off the interception by Josh Johnson. But the late pitch on the speed option there on first yep. down. Three wide to the right for Gage Porter. Ball on the left hash. Porter has it. He will roll. It's a backside screen for Dalen Smith, and he has blockers in front. Down the far sideline he goes. Upended by Jonathan Scott. Out at the 35-yard line. The crafty little play oh, there. I know, and Porter just ekes that pass right over the, uh, I think that was an outside linebacker on the stunt. Oh, man, just the perfect time to call a screen. You know, you actually teach and coach quarterbacks when they throw a screen to get big. So even almost throwing on their tippy toes and with their hand up high like they're shooting a jump shot simply so they can throw it over big guys like that. Ball on the left hash here. First and ten for SNU. Back to either side. Porter fumbled it again. Picks it up. Trying to get outside. Face mask on the play. Coming up as Porter is wrestled down. Back inside the 25-yard line. The line judge is the one who threw it. Yeah, yeah. He had his helmet ripped off as a result. There's no way this is not a face mask. I mean, his, <laughs> his head turned completely sideways. No, uh, no way to get out of this one. If they don't call this, then... It looks like Katron Allen is the guilty party. We'll see if an unfor semi unfortunate for SNU is it's 15 yards from the spot as opposed to 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So it is a first down, but only get picked up five yards on the penalty yardage. Yeah, that's. As Katron Allen, the senior safety, actually became a new dad last month. So congrats to him. Yeah, that's right. Being a new dad and playing college football, doing, <laughs> playing, going to practice and playing games on. Little sleep does not sound yeah, enjoyable. No, good it's good luck to him. Glad glad for him as well. Now the officials stop play momentarily. The head linesman comes in from the far side. Maybe it's ball spot. Something's going on. Maybe they just want to have a conversation. Who knows? So now all seven <laughs> officials have come in. You might as well, right? To discuss it. Well, well we're missing one. Here he comes. Here comes the field judge. <laughs> you know, if I'm the field judge, I'm probably just staying in my position. Yeah, just stay at the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're picking the football up. We're getting some extra yards here. We'll take it.
Well, if it was 15 from the line of scrimmage, they still don't have that right. Yeah. If and now I think the line judge is going to, once again, oh, there come we go. in and correct it. Okay. And now the Montes and now the Monticello players are confused why it's happening. <laughs> They're like, why do they keep giving us giving them five yards? But so yeah. this was 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, not from the spot of the foul. And the crowd loves it. <laughs> Three wide receivers to the right. Porter, quick bubble out to the outside to Joe Flores, and he is wrestled down for a five-yard loss back at the 45-yard line. This is the first time Flores, the transfer from University of New Mexico, has been on the field this evening, mm -hmm. and uh, not what he had in mind on his first yeah. reception. No, certainly not, but way to hang on to the football right there. Indeed. A lot of traffic over there. You know, and I know that they love to throw the screens in the boundary. They give me a little bit of anxiety, though, because you got so many bodies over there. But if you can spring one free, there's no one behind anybody. So I get why they do it, but still stressful. Second and 15, ball on the right hash. Porter fakes the give to Flores, picks his way up the middle, bounces it outside. 50, 45, 40. Can he outrate this eight, race the defense inside the 30-yard line? Down to the 27-yard line goes Gage Porter. And Landry, you talked about that second gear. He showed yeah, it there. That's right. And, yeah, I mean, he's he's probably not going to win the overall foot race to the end zone right there. But, man, he gets an extra five or six or seven yards simply by just hitting that second gear and making his body small and getting out of that tackle. 13.09 to go in the football game. 34-26. The Weevils with the lead. But SNU... Down inside the Weevils' 30-yard line. Flores and Thomas flank Porter. Now Flores goes out to the right side. Porter, back to pass. Blitz comes, and he is, cannot escape the pressure. As number 51, Tyron Bellard, came through and was able to get Porter on the ground back at the 34-yard line. Yeah, it looked like some kind of stunt that threw the offensive line off. Uh, and, uh, man, Bellard really had almost no contact to him. And even though Gage is the superior athlete there, you you don't have room to work. It's hard to move. So the loss of seven puts the ball back at the Weevils' 34-yard line. 12-12 and counting. 34-26, Arkansas Monticello with the lead. Flores in motion to the left. Quarterback draw all the way. Porter right up the middle. 20, 15, he dives down at the 17-yard line. Looks like he's going to be just short of that first down. But, man, both teams utilizing the quarterback draw of all plays to their advantage. That was a rough spot. The slide is supposed to be where you give yourself up, but a dive is different. Right, it's where a the head, ball Especially is, a yeah. head-first dive. So it's third and two here for SNU. From the 19-yard line. 15 on the play clock as Porter checks to the sideline. 11.25 and counting. Play clock down to five. Thomas shifts to the left side. Here comes Robertson in motion. Porter fakes it. Up the middle he goes. Across the 15. First down, SNU. All right. Inside the 15. Easier you got to have it plays right here, Luke. It'll be first and 10 at the 13-yard line. 11 minutes to play. SNU down by 8. Of course, now you're starting to get into the territory of it's late enough where you might need to go ahead and go yeah. for 2. I think there's no question. You score a touchdown, you go for 2. And just you do run the risk if uh, the Weevils do score a touchdown the other way mm -hmm. that you can put it back to 2 possessions. We'll see what the what the book says. Porter gives it to Carlos Thomas. Running outside. Taken down by White. In the backfield, loss of one. And White came flying in from his linebacker position there to make a great play. Second and 11. Clock continues to move. 10-15 and counting. You know, and obviously a touchdown is, is better here. But you're not going to be terribly disappointed if you get a field goal because it really does cut that lead down to where the next 
the next touchdown matters. But also, you know, I, knowing Coach Hayda, you know, you might just go for it. One wide receiver split out. It's Colby Branch on an island. Porter fakes the look, bounces it back up the middle. It's Lloyd who comes down from his safety spot to chop down Porter after a gain of two down to the 12. That's going to be third down and nine. Catron Allen a little slow to get up. Yeah, and if you're back to the safety spot. And if you uh, if you're going for it on fourth down, you know it's third down. And you've got to have a chunk here. You're not going to go for it on fourth and long, but you think think two down territory here, Luke? I'm not sure. Three timeouts. I'd almost take, I think I'd take the points. Yeah. I think I'd take the points here. We'll find out in a minute. Porter, back to pass, rolling right. Now he's in trouble. Trying to escape the pressure. Still trying to escape the pressure. Now he's really in trouble. Slips in us to running back Angel Ramirez. There's still 20, 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Ramirez to the 25. He's chopped down at the 21-yard line. Flags everywhere. Porter slow to get up here over at the 40-yard line on the near side. Flags in the middle of the field. There's no telling what's going to happen here. Man, thank goodness for Angel Ramirez being... <laughs> Ready to catch a pass. And I think Coach Hud Jackson is going to decline whatever penalty is yeah. on S and U. It's going to be a legal block in the back on the Crimson Storm. So it's going to be fourth down you gotta kick the field from the 22-yard line. It's a 39-yard field goal from here. And here comes a field goal team. Yeah, this is the right call. Certainly absolutely. after this loss. Yes, absolutely. You know, and uh, Gage has made some tremendous plays tonight. And sometimes those plays can um, make you feel almost invincible. And, man, he, he really did almost make another amazing play. But sometimes you just got to let that thing rip out of the back of the end zone uh, and live to fight another down. Yeah, because this now becomes... Uh, a longer field goal here for Reed. Snap, hold, kick is on the way. Helicoptering, and he missed it. Wide right. Yeah, it didn't look good from the kick. You know, just snap was low. His steps seemed a little off. And that ball turned sideways in a hurry. A 39-yard field goal attempt from Ryan Reed. Goes wide right. And SNU, which had it first and 10 at the 13-yard line, comes up empty with 8.26 to play. So now back to the SNU defense to try and get a stop. Brown takes the snap, just goes right up the middle. <laughs> He's going to be spilled after a gain of two to the 25-yard line. Yeah, no getting around it. They know who they want to have the ball <laughs> in these situations. So Brown, that's 11 carries now for 133 yards. And Monticello in no hurry as we're under eight minutes to play in the ball game. 34-26. The Weevils with the lead. Brown turns and gives it to Scott. Cuts it right back up the middle. He's across the 30. He's got the first down. Breaks free of tackles. Excuse me, that's manual. All the way out to the 45, 44-yard line. And David Omasigo down for SNU back inside the 30-yard line. Ethan Miner on the tackle for SNU, but a big chunk play there for Dorian Manuel. His third carry of the night. Man, and just a hard run. Not going down easy. Manuel, not a big guy either. Just listed at 5'6", 175. The sophomore from Houston. At 10 carries for 128 yards a year ago. It's like Omasigo dealing with some cramping as well. 
You know, and cramp- cramping such an interesting right. thing, Landry. You know, it's not really warm right now, and you're like, well, these guys have been going through conditioning and, mm-hmm. and much, much hotter <laughs> temperatures over the past yes. couple of weeks than yes, what it certainly. is tonight. But it, the game speed, game action, is it's just different. Everything about it is yeah. just a little different uh, and takes it out of you in a different way than it does in practice where you're just mm-hmm. doing doing reps. That's right. And, you know, in practice, you know, I, I maybe, you know, 30, 40 years ago, practice was designed for you to be miserable the whole time. But, you know, just studies have shown that you take care of your players during practice so that they can play in the games, right? And so practices have gotten increasingly less strenuous uh, in a lot of ways, and you just can't replicate a play after a play after a play after a play. First and ten, Brown gives to Manuel again, running left, stretching it out, decked hard by Eli Calhoun. It's a gain of eight. Two holes on Seven that play. to the 48-yard line. Listen, you got away with a jump yeah, on the yeah. far side as well. Probably three, three flags could have been thrown there. Looked like, yeah, the outside linebacker maybe uh, a little quick. Seven minutes to play. Weevils second and three at the SNU 48-yard line. Ball on the left hash. Two wide to the right, one to the left. Brown takes the snap. Quarterback draw all the way. Picks his way across the 45 and is belted down by a couple SNU defenders at the 40-yard line. Including Marcus Sowell, they're just getting that little bit of push at the front of the line, which at the end of the second, second or first half, they just they weren't really getting that, and uh, they they uh, certainly running wise have the momentum and the steam. That offensive line for Monticello is working really well. Monticello over 300 yards rushing this evening, averaging seven and a half yards a pop. Six minutes to go. Brown, draw all the way, running to the outside. Turns the corner, just tripped up there by Trent Smith. He goes down inbounds at the 31-yard line. A pickup of nine on first down. Clock, not SNU's friend at this point. They do have all three timeouts. But a stop is the most important thing at this point. In a one-possession game, got to prevent points here. Yep. Second and one, ball on the right hash. Scott is the back behind Brown. Yeah, That's going to be a false start on the right guard. little flinch there. Yeah. That will help the cause for the Crimson Storm, make it second and six. That's one of those false starts that you're hoping – Looks more like your motion to to move forward, but uh, yeah. Let's see if SNU can take advantage of this break right here. Second and six from the thirty-six. Clock moving. Five, ten, and counting. Ball on the right hash, Brown, back to pass. Going down the far sideline, looking for the Cedric Smith, and he caught it! What a catch! A touchdown for the Cedric Smith. A perfect pass yeah, and a perfect man. catch. Cam Wells was in great position, but that was a dime from DeMilon Brown. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing you can, you can do on that play. Uh, good coverage again I mean he's Brown is playing a heck of a game and, and all credit to him I mean he's run the ball well and when the opportunities to pass especially downfield he's he's hit his targets McKnight on for the extra point his last one was blocked that one also blocked it's loose on the ground and plays dead so now an even 14-point margin here for SNU to overcome with 4.55 to play. Our new score, Arkansas Monticello 40 and Southern Nazarene 26. Landry, how about this? 
Our last punt in this game <coughs> came with 11.33 to go in the second quarter. Uh, yeah. So we had six punts in the first <laughs> 19 minutes of the game, and we've had none since. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. I mean, this has been a great game, and, um, you know, regardless of the outcome, there's still plenty of time, by the way. Regardless of the outcome, I think SNU should uh, should be pleased with a lot of things they did. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some frustration from the first first quarter and a half that they played, but I mean, they, they can compete with just about any team in this league, and especially when when they get off to the right start, uh, they're going to be a, they're going to be a team to watch out for this year. So SNU with their work cut out for them. They do have all three timeouts remaining. But needing to go up and down the field two times with a stop th or an onside kick thrown in between to not the score at 40. Has been a pretty even game. Biggest difference, at least in the second half, Monticello has been 5-for-5 five five on third down conversions, and SNU just 1-for-3. 2-for-9 hmm. for, for the game. Monticello 6-for-11 for the game. The Weevils, 548 yards of offense tonight, 8.3 yards per play. SNU a quality 5.7 yards per play, but they've run 17 less plays than the Weevils thus far this evening. Time of possession slightly favors SNU. That drive that ended in the field goal attempt that was missed took over seven minutes off the clock. So a double gut punch there to milk it as much as they did and come up empty. Let's see what happens here, though. McKnight, end over end kick. It's going to be Donald May from the five. May to the left side trying to get outside. Slowed down enough. There by number 34, Amare Sibley. Well, a nice play there on special teams by the freshman. May couldn't quite get away from him. But it'll, so it'll be first down for SNU at the 27-yard line. Yeah, he's, he's had a great game. I mean, special teams in general for, for the Storm ha have been probably the, the most complete um, side of the football. You know, you have one miss miss kick, um, but other than that, the, the punting game has been good. Kickoff has has been good. Kick kick return certainly has excelled. So, props to the special teams coordinator. So SNU going to need to go quickly here with 4:40 to play. Also, special teams coordinator may be the coolest title in football. That's true. Robertson the main in motion to the near side. That play looked disjointed from the snap. Robertson got it on the pitch. And it's chopped down after a gain of one to the 29 yard line. Dustin Hayda asking for a hold on his blocker on the outside. To no avail. So it'll be second and nine. And they need to go. Eighteen on the play clock here, pushing down to four minutes to go in the ball game. Porter takes it, tries to cut back. Couldn't do it. Damaris White got him in the backfield. It's a loss of four. <laughs> and it'll be third down. Luke, it, it seemed as if that was opening up. You know, I, I know the cutback. Uh, the temptation is there because you know you have the numbers to the field. You have people flowing. So the cutback lane is always tempting, especially as a run. It looks much cooler. But, man, it really did look like that power was opening wide uh, for him to run through. Third down and 12 on the 26-yard line. SNU needing to get at least a big chunk of this here on this play. Porter 
across the middle. It's behind Aaron Fellows, who nearly made an incredible one-handed catch. But it falls incomplete. Fourth yeah, down here, you got to go. Yeah, down two scores. And you just, this drive, I mean, you just wish you could have gotten some kind of chunk yards from some of, some of these plays. Ten seconds on the play clock as SNU comes to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and 12 from the 26-yard line. Porter rolling to the left. He's got time, floats it to the sideline. He's got his man, Donovan Hill, for his first reception of the evening. It's just enough for the first down at the 39. And SNU got to push tempo here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, three minutes to go. You got tired legs. You got a tired offensive line, but no time to be tired right now. This is winning time. 2.45 and counting. SNU not exactly built for the hurry up. No. And you figured you're going to keep keep it all one way or the other. Porters, back to pass. Scampers to the outside. Got to get out Down of bounds. Down the sideline. He does get out of bounds near midfield. They'll mark him out right at the SNU 49-yard line. That's enough for the first down after the 10-yard gain. No, the clock should not be running. He ran out of bounds. Yeah, the clock should not be running right now. Well, it was before two minutes. So I believe that is why the clock is running. So we're down to two minutes. Ball right near midfield. Porter's back to pass. Pressure in the pocket. And he escapes somehow. Now he's in trouble again. Still escapes. Still escapes. Nearly lost the ball. Tried to fling it forward. And he's going to be marked down at the 46-yard line. A timeout by SNU. And the officials are saying wind the clock, but it's a timeout. The far side head linesman was winding his arm like <laughs> nobody's <laughs> business. Yeah. Um, an incredible escape job by Porter, but just got to throw that out of yeah. bounds. And instead, a lost timeout and three lost yards here with 1.45 to play. Looks like it's Alfred e. Hankins, the Monticello defender dealing with cramps himself. So, second down, 13 yards to go for SNU from their own 47-yard line. 145 to play. And Landry, we didn't see Gage Porter last year because the injury and the season opener. Jarvis Davis a lot more... We'll, we'll say the term conservative yes. than Porter. Um, and he enjoys the throw more. I mean, and he's yes. probably more designed that way. But you know, Gage is one of those guys. He's going to extend the play. Yeah. And, you know, I, I certainly don't envy Coach Hayda trying to help him You know, see when that time is to give up the ghost, if you will. Right. Right, yeah. I mean, he makes so many plays running with his legs. You're... Sometimes you're just like, ah, whatever. Porter's back to pass on second and 13. Looking right. Now he's in trouble in the pocket. He's going to be sacked by number 96. It's Cameron Raggio who ripped the helmet off of Gage Porter. Can't believe there was not a penalty there. And so now Porter's going to have to come off for a play after. Now, I, I think if he takes a timeout. Yes, well, th yes, that is correct. So it'll be third down. The timeout will allow Porter to stay in the game. You know, sometimes I wonder if people strap their helmets up all the way. Yeah, it, it's hard to get a helmet on and off. Yeah. <laughs> So third down, 
12 yards to go. 137 to play. SNU's down to one timeout now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're playing for a, a touchdown and then a, a, an onside. I mean, I don't know. You know, that, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Um, and it, based on the tempo initially, it seen what Coach Ada's yeah. doing. Like, we're going to end this with our hands on the ball. Right. It's not going to be. And, you know, the defense is, I mean, as well as they played at times, the plays they made, I mean, they've been worn down. Yeah. You know, 548 yards, 8.3 yards per play. It, you know, hasn't been easy no, for them tonight. Certainly they, not. They, it, it would be hard to count on them as worn out as they are at the moment mm -hmm. to go get that, get that one stop. Control what you can. So, third and 12. SNU's got to have it. Three wide to the right. Porter's got the snap rolling to the right. Here comes the blitz from Corson. He gets away from it. Now running to the back side. Finds a wide open Jaron Alvarado inside the 40. He spins away from one defender. And he's going to be taken down at the 37-yard line. SNU's going to have to hurry, but Corson is down for Arkansas Monticello. So that will keep the clock stopped for the time being, and he seems to be in some pain. Yeah, grabbing his... Does not really look tell. like a cramp here. No. So we'll take a quick break and step aside while the Monticello trainers attend to Tanner Corson. Welcome back to Bethany. Tanner Corset, the injured Monticello player, walking gingerly to the sideline. Wish the best for him. 122 to play. SNU ball at the Monticello 37 yard line. Clock is moving. Porter takes the snap from the far hash. Throws it out to the far side is Colby Branch, and that one's low and incomplete. So that at least stops the clock with 115 to play. Second down and 10. Yeah, looking for quick hitters here. Still one timeout left. Fifteen seconds on the play clock for the Crimson Storm as they come to the line of scrimmage. Three wide to the right. Alvarado the tight end to the left. Now Robertson joins him over there as well. Alvarado shifts to the right. Porter's back to pass. Fires it down the middle of the field. It's short of Aaron Fellows and incomplete. Looked like Fellows was... Running a post route, it looked like Porter yeah. expected him to come more into the middle of the field yeah. there. And it, and it looked like his arm rotation got kind of choked up by stepping into the pocket. You know, and 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 f and uh, for Porter, they designed passes for him to be on the run. He's also getting back into the groove of playing again. Those are things that, as natural as some players make them seem, are really discipline things for an athlete so he'll get there 
Third and ten. Porter's back to pass. Shifts to the left. Keeping his eyes downfield. Looking for help. Finds Robertson on the outside across the 30. He gets out of bounds. It's not going to be enough for the first down. Let's see where they mark him. It's like about the 29-yard line. So it'll be fourth and a long two from the 30-yard line. So here's the ball game right here. Yes, and you've got to have a first down to keep the drive alive. One minute, one second to go. 40 to 26, the Weevils with the lead. Two wide either side. Zapata the back to the left of Porter. Ball on the right hash. Porter back to pass, looking for the quick out, and it's woefully short of Colby Branch, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. And that will do it here in yeah. the season opener from Bethany. SNU, let's put it all out there. Again, like we have mentioned before, mentioned last year a lot, the yeah. fight that SNU showed in every single game last year, regardless of the margin, was certainly a change. And tonight, again, big messages being preached by assistant head coach Ken West right now with the whole team as DeMilan Brown takes a knee. We'll have one more. But a valiant effort here yeah, certainly. from SNU tonight. There's a couple plays here and there. And yeah. This one could have been could have been different. Yeah, and and uh, you know that's something that We'll take some course correcting. You know, this is a winnable football game. And uh, and they have every right to be frustrated because they had chances to take advantage uh, of the momentum. But what they what the Storm has showed us over the last two seasons, Luke, is uh, they no longer uh, give up at the end of a game, right? They fight until that game is over. And that's, uh, it should be careful. They're not like they were giving up, but... But the blowouts we used to see, those are done, right? Like there is competition until that final whistle sounds, and uh, and they're laying the groundwork for something special here. Yeah, certain certainly against teams that you know they have no business being blown out right. by. You know, the last time Arkansas Monticello was in Bethany, you know, was all the way back in 2018. <laughs> first and foremost, <laughs> um, so nearly a whole class of players went a whole career without coming coming here or us and you players playing Monticello here. Um, but that that day here was a thirty five to twelve loss right. to to a Monticello team that um, that in twenty eighteen, you know, went they went six and six, went to went to a bowl game and, and lost that bowl game. But, you know, not a Washita or right. a Harding. You right. know S and U losing by several touchdowns to okay teams has been something of the past. Mm -hmm. But we've seen the past two years, like you said, I'm not sure how many of those we're going to see going forward. Right. Yeah, I agree. And Man, I expect some wins this season. Uh, not, just, not just one or two, but I think there's some really winnable games on this roster in a really good conference. And, uh, and I think they have the players and just the mental attitude. Um... To get to get some of those close games across um, to a better result. Yeah, and I think tonight did a lot for for the confidence of this bunch. Just some some of the plays that they made and the way that they were able to move the ball. Um, you know that drive in the fourth quarter. It turned up empty, but I mean, a seven minute drive for the Crimson Storm against a you know solid defense yeah. in Arkansas Monticello. I mean. I mean, th that's a confidence booster. It, yeah, absolutely. It didn't result in things, in points, but it's a confidence booster nonetheless. Let's run through the final numbers here for you this evening. SNU, 61 plays, 322 total yards this evening. That's 5.3 yards per play. 
Arkansas Monticello, 67 plays, 543 yards, 8.1 yards per play for the Weevils. On the ground, SNU 37 attempts, 179 yards, 4.8 yards per carry. Monticello, 43 carries, 315 yards on the ground, 7.3 yards per carry. Through the air, SNU, 12 of 24, 143 yards, 12 of 24, three interceptions for Monticello for 228 yards. SNU had the time of possession edge, 31-51 to 27-10. And penalty yards, Monticello 9 for 81, SNU 8 for 60. SNU is 3 of 12 on third downs, 3 of 6 in the second half. Monticello was 6 of 11. It was a perfect 5 for 5 on third downs in the second half, um, which really was the difference in the ball game. Uh, in the second half in particular. Uh, three interceptions. Three interceptions for SNU. So great job by the secondary. You know, Coach Hayda mentioned forcing turnovers was a big emphasis. And, uh, you know, they won the turnover battle today 3-1. to one. And, you know, a lot of times if you're going to win the turnover battle 3-1, yeah. you're probably going to come out with a win. Yeah, and you think... You know, if one of those is a touchdown, this is a whole different ball game. And you know, and you hate to do the shoulda, coulda, would us after a game, uh, but uh, you know, as a coaching staff, that's part of their job is to think, okay, how can we adjust these next game? They put themselves in some really good positions to win this game, and that's that's what I'm saying. They they, they should have every right to be frustrated, but uh, but also there's a lot of a lot of really really good things they did, and they snapped themselves out of that first quarter drought quickly. Um, which uh, in the past has sometimes lingered on to the third and fourth quarter. Uh, they, they've they done uh, a tremendous job at that. Next week, Luke, they've got to start fast. they got to start fast. They have the momentum. They have the skills and the players, especially on offense, to make that happen. They've got to start fast. Yeah, the the slow start just was killer. That first, ha first quarter, Monticello rolled up 163 yards, of offense, they averaged 10.2 yards per play. SNU had one first down, 34 yards of offense, 3.1 yards per play in the first quarter, and yeah, I mean that that was a killer. I mean, uh, literally the difference in the game, the 14-0 right. deficit in that first quarter. Uh, individually, run through those numbers for you: Gage Porter, 12 of 21, 143 yards and a touchdown. Jarvis Davis was over three through the air. Uh, here's the Gage Porter. You know, experience for you. 24 carries, 131 yards net, 168 yards gained. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. two touchdowns on the ground for Gage Porter. Jarvis Davis, four carries, 21 yards, three for 12 for Carlos Cepeda, three for 12 for Angel Ramirez, one for three for Jarrell Farr, and one for th one for Asa Robertson. Demilon Brown was fantastic tonight. The veteran quarterback for Arkansas Monticello. 12-24, 228 yards through the air. Two touchdowns. Did throw the three interceptions. Uh, but also 13 carries, 149 yards, three touchdowns on the ground for Brown. Gennaro Scott, 21 carries, 129 yards and a touchdown. Three carries, 33 yards for Dorian Manuel. Edwin Klein-Peter, Three carries for six yards, and Caleb Jacobs, one carry for three yards. Receiving-wise, three catches, 97 yards for Isaiah Cross, two for 51 for Caleb Jacobs for Monticello, one for 37 and a touchdown for LaCedric Smith, four, 36 and a touchdown for Jordan Mansfield, one for five for Ben Colligan, and one for two for Gennaro Scott for SNU. Three for 51 for Asa Robertson leading the way. Good to see him back after that collarbone injury last season. Three for 44 for Jaron Alvarado. One for 19 for Dalen Smith. One for 13 for uh, Donovan Hill. One for 12 for Jarrell Farr. Two for nine for Angel Ramirez with the touchdown. Uh, looking over just some of the defensive stats here for SNU. Pull those up real quick. Actually, let's get caught up on 
scores from around the conference real quick as we wrap things up here. Fourth quarter action, 35-12, to Washtenaw Baptist over Oklahoma Baptist. Overtime down in Durant. Arkansas Tech leads 34-31. Southeastern with the football, and they have it second and goal. Now third and goal at the Arkansas Tech <laughs> six-yard line. So Tech trying to hold on with their backs against the goal line for a big upset there in Durant. So we'll keep an eye on that as we go on. Southern Arkansas leads 21-9 over Northwestern. Fourth quarter in Ada, 29-12. Harding leads East Central. And third quarter over in Arkadelphia, Henderson State, 23-13 to over Southwestern. Uh, just a quick look at the tackles tonight. Eli Calhoun, Trent Smith, as they normally have done the past couple of years, leading the team in tackles. Nine for Calhoun and eight for Smith. Tanner Corson led Monticello with tackles with nine. Also had two tackles for loss. Eight for Demarion Holmes for the Weevils leading the way there. Uh, Landry, SNU faced a tough task. they got to go on the road next week to Washita Baptist. Um, obviously the Tigers probably going to be licking their chops a little bit with yep. their rushing attack with TJ Cole and Kendall Givens up there, especially seeing you know, SNU give up 310 on the ground this week. Um, how do they bounce back? Yeah, well, I think you, you know, you, as a coach, you're trying to give them um, some things to to correct first off, but also like you you can't make any game impossible. Luke, we were here a few years ago when that same Washita team, or was it Harding? Either the, one. The, the cold, the rainy cold. night that was Washita. The Washita, Boy, was they were they were weather. top <laughs> five in the nation, and all of a sudden that game is you know three point game for almost the whole. The whole game, right? Like this really close game. You just never know. And so they're, Washita is obviously one of the best teams in the country, and they have been for the last 20 years. But even the best teams in the country are still full of uh, athletes and uh, people who can make mistakes, and you can take advantage of them. This, I mean, SNU is a good football team. And they're in a tough conference, but but they need to play like they can win that game, and you're gonna, and certainly they're going to coach like that this week. So bounce back. you you got to execute on simple things, false starts, um, snaps were a big deal. And then defensively, just getting those hands free to make some tackles at the line of scrimmage. If you're going to play a good run team, you got to you got to win the upfront battle. And tonight there were times they did, and they looked really good as a defense. And then there were times they didn't, and they got run all over. Yeah, that'll do it for us here from SNU Football Stadium. Again, the final score tonight, SNU falls in the season opener 40-26 to to Arkansas Monticello. Next broadcast will be Saturday, September 17th. The Tigers of East Central will be in town for that one. 2 o'clock kickoff here in Bethany. You can watch that game right here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel where you can catch all. SNU home games this season. Again, our first road broadcast will take place on the 24th at Southeastern, where you can listen to that game on Crossover Radio Sports. For all of us here at SNU Athletics, my partner, Landry Franks, I'm Luke McConnell saying good evening from Bethany.